testing one, two. It's on. I learned how to do that last week. I've been wearing this for three years. I just learned how to do that last week. What's that, what's that mean? Well, God uses slow learners. I've met a lot of slow learners in my ministry. I've met racks of them. And if you don't give up, the Holy Ghost never gives up. That's how it works. A couple of quick announcements. Uh, number one, the House of Healing sold last week. It felt like I lost a good friend. And uh, thank God for all the miracles we had over there. All the people that got healed. All the people that got delivered in that little building there. You know, good things can come from small beginnings. And uh, so grateful for that place. That was my uh, counseling building for years. I was a secular counselor here in Phoenix for 25 years, and that was the building I bought years ago. Because I sat down and I was totaling up my rent receipts for my counseling practice. I said, hey, this is ridiculous. Why should I keep paying rent? when I could just buy a small building, pay that off instead of paying rent. See, Paul, you guys don't get it, do you? It's all there. Finding it is the challenge. And so that's how I got that building. Who, kn who, who knew I was going to turn my life over to the Lord? Who knew God was going to use that little building and heal all them people? That's amazing. Uh, secondly, my dad died a couple of days ago, and uh, he was 21 years old. I had set up a preaching gig uh, three or four years ago back in Kansas and prayed for him. He got filled with the Holy Ghost and was speaking in tongues. And yeah. <clears throat> my, dad, uh, my dad was a physical freak of nature. He was healthy as a horse up to age 89. And uh, years ago when he was living in sin, did everything, drank too much, smoked too much. Uh, he was an over-the-road truck driver, never took care of himself, never took any vitamins, <clears throat> ate anything that moved near him. It didn't matter what it was. My dad never spent a day taking care of himself and healthy as a horse till he was 89. It was a couple of years ago, and then he came down with a couple forms of cancer, and uh, he was looking forward to dying and going home. So it was great. And he died on the same day my mother died, 28 years ago. Now that's freaky. 28 years later, my dad died on the same day, same date in March that my mother died. That was, I thought that was weird. Uh, the third announcement. We uh, sold the church across the street and the property is now gone. And uh, the fourth announcement is... Uh, Every month this year, we've had all of our bills paid, and then some. We've been loading up the uh, building fund. We're going to be here for a little while longer, and then we're going to move over to the National Deliverance Center, wherever that is, and then we're going to move into the revival. Okay, So we're still on track to uh, do something with God's mercy. Amen. That's the way it works. All right, the gifts of the Spirit tonight, that's a fun night, that's a fun, fun seminar, and I really like doing this one because it's, there's a lot of interest in it and a lot of fun and happiness that goes with it. All right, uh, there's our ra my current updated radio schedule. I'm on uh, every day of the week now on 1010 AM. I'm on all the time on the internet, all you have to do is go there, you can Catch all the archive radio shows there. My uh, secular radio, Dark Sky Radio, that's a secular station. I am uh, in the top two or three on that uh, program. Um, I'm on every night of the week, and last week I think the total was 18,000. I had to minister to 18,000 people, so that's going real well. And... Uh, We have uh, three uh, teaching uh, 
channels on YouTube, and tonight's uh, teaching is going to be on our House of Healing AZ channel on YouTube. You can watch it later if you'd like. Please send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. If you know somebody that needs to go through deliverance but won't come for deliverance or can't come for deliverance, these two lists, if you go to the website and hit the testimonial button there, you'll read all the wonderful testimonies about people that have gone through these lists. They're extremely effective, and you can do it in the privacy of your own home. I'll send you a copy of them. Just send me an email. I send them out, of course, as fast as I can. Daily send these things out. If you'd like to help the ministry uh, and help purchase the National Deliverance Center, you can go to Amazon, smileamazon.com, and put in our charity name, and they will pay us when you buy stuff on Amazon. And uh, Mr. Bezos will thank you. <laughs> and can you bring me a couple? Did you put new batteries in this? Mm -hmm. Yes. You did. All righty then. The uh, donation boxes are on the doors there, and uh, the doors have been shut, and they're also locked. <laughs> you cannot get out of here until you. Do you need a receipt for your donation last year? Okay, just send me an email, Mike at Hardcore Christian. I'll send it out immediately. You can donate on the website. Thank you. I wrote three books. They're in the bookstore. One on mental illness and how to be cured. And uh, one on divine healing and one on exposing Satan. Our healing rooms are booming here Thursday night. They are absolutely fantastic. There hasn't been one bad week that I can recall. They are really something. 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And then our mental illness healing class is doing fantastic. If you know some Christian who has mentally ill, 7 o'clock every Thursday. It's in the small sanctuary. Please send them and uh, so we can help them, okay? That's Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. All right? I'll be on uh, TalkAmericaRadio.us. On uh, April 30th, that's Saturday. Oh, not tomorrow. That was a mistake on my Facebook page. There's the Teen Challenge meeting next month, April 14th, down here in Phoenix on Grand. You know where they are? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, there's the one in uh, Tucson. We'll be back there in May. Yep. And there's the meeting at the Hilton Inn in uh, Irvine, California. That's in uh, June. They uh, made the mistake of inviting me. <laughs> wow. I don't play well and get along with others. Tonight's Bible study is based on the uh, King James Bible. Um, we sell, in my opinion, the best translation of the Bible known to man. It's the KJ3. It's in the bookstore. That is the best one. If you are a Bible person, I hope you are, recommend you stay with these versions because they used the Textus Recepticus uh, as the foundation for their translation. If you use some of the other versions, you're going to see sections of text that are not in there anymore. Some things have been deleted and so on. They're using a different foundation for their translation, the Westcott Holt, and some of the other ones, they don't have all the verses there that you're used to seeing, but they are all in this one, and the one I sell in the uh, uh, bookstore is better than all those other translations. All right, let's go. Now let's take a quick vote. You want to ask questions as we go, or ask questions at the end of the seminar so we can get through it, okay? Raise your hand, ask questions as we go. <laughs> All right, this is ask questions at the end. All right, the ask, <laughs> the ask questions at the end have it. <laughs> let's go. All right, now let's quickly go through these, and, and uh, so a lot of this stuff will be re review for you. Uh, a lot of it will be new information. All right, what is the purpose of the gifts? Well, 
It's to do what? Mark 16, after the Lord spoke to them, he went to the, went into heaven, sat on the right hand of God, praise God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. Uh, Bebaio is the Greek word there. It means to lay a foundation or a, something to put something on. Right? For example, this is Bebaio for that lamp. I'm setting it on there. This lamp is set up and established. Uh, that wasn't supposed to be there. I'm going to get on my staff tonight. But this green part is supposed to be pretty. If you talk to a Muslim about the Quran and you talk to a Christian about the, the Bible, what's going to happen? Usually nothing. Unless somebody can prove it. If you can't prove it, it's just two people yakking, right? It's like Trump and Pelosi going at it. <laughs> I'd pay some serious money to see a cage match on that one. <laughs> She'd probably choke him out. The Holy Ghost is the central figure in the universe. You could be a Bible scholar and have an argument with a Muslim scholar. You know what the end result would be? Nothing. The Muslim guy is not going to believe anything the Christian guy said. The Christian guy is not going to believe anything the Muslim guy said. However, if you have the gifts of the Spirit and you can prove the Bible's real, then you win. Christianity in America is a monstrositous failure. Why? It's all talk. Anybody can talk a big game. If you're an eloquent speaker, you're you, you got it all. Talking doesn't work alone. See, <laughs> preaching and teaching is a failure. If you are only a teacher or a preacher, you are a failure. Jesus preached, teached, and healed. Amen. You must have the full gospel for it to be effective and for it to work. If you don't have it, you become just another religious person. The gifts of the Spirit establish the Word of God here and all the other religions here. Amen. Correct? <clears throat> Confirming the Word with Simeon is the Greek word for miracles. Okay? The Holy Ghost isn't just talk. He's the verb of the divine trinity, and he's ready to go 24-7. Yes, sir. His specialty is drop kicking. <laughs> he takes the devil, boom, there he goes. All the other religions, yak, 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 yak. Now, there are some exceptions, of course, voodoo and witchcraft. They do have power. That's a different subject. But I'm talking about this religious stuff. The Holy Ghost is the key factor. I used to have a prison ministry for years. I went out to preach to the men. They had been preached to a million times in chapels. Does very little good. Sometimes they get saved once in a while. No big deal. They usually backslide. However, when you went to the chapel and you were looking for the Holy Ghost to move, that was a horse of a different color. Then the men responded aggressively. The Spirit of God is the ticket to victory. If he's not moving, your home group, your church, or whatever you got, who cares really? Well, Mike, you're not a very nice person. Listen, God didn't give you his word to stand around hoping it worked. He sent us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the only person the demons and the devil <coughs> truly fears because he's a person who will do something. They don't like it when people do anything. Is this making sense? So, what happens is you get born again. That's the Greek word pneuma, as you can see there. That's your spirit, man. And you get filled with the Holy Ghost, 
And what happens next? Well, if you didn't go through deliverance, your anointing, your giftings, and your ministry is blocked. It blocks it. The spirits hiding in the body from your years of living in sin, now that you're born again in spirit, hide in your brain and your body, blocking your anointing and your ministry and your giftings. What we have to do tonight is remove that block so you can flow like a river. A dam blocks a river. Uh huh. Negative thoughts, lies, false teachings, demons block your anointing and your flow. Remove the block, tear down the dam. Whew. Holy Ghost flows smooth with no problemo. How's it blocked usually? Usually in the mind. Fears, confusion, bad teaching, false doctrines, cowardice, childhood fears, all block the moving of the Spirit. If you remove those things, it flows easy. All right, let's look at the ten supernatural gifts of the Spirit real quick, and then we'll look at some illustrations of them. Lagos Sophia. What is that? A word of wisdom. Is that somebody who's really intelligent with a high IQ with a good education? No. It's a supernatural gift of wisdom that you didn't have to fix something. <clears throat> it's a gift of wisdom, a word of wisdom coming from the Holy Ghost that's not you. Okay? The gift of wisdom is not someone who can uh, give you a math problem and fix it. Okay, that, that comes from the person. Wisdom is divine wisdom that this gift allows you to use in certain circumstances. Lagos gnosis, what is that? What's, where do we get the, what's this Greek word gnosis mean? What are, what are agnostics? <laughs> it's a word of knowledge. It's some gift that allows you to receive knowledge about a person or a ministry or a situation that you don't have. It's something you don't have as a person. The gifts are supernatural. They're not natural. In other words, they're not somebody who completed a Tony Robbins course, who went through a memory class, somebody who, who has got word association skills. No. This is supernatural knowledge given to you by the Holy Spirit that you don't have knowledge about something, someone, some situation, and so on. Discerning of spirits. Diocrisis, what is that? That is uh, the ability to see and hear into the spirit world. And it's all kinds of spirits and different kinds of spirits. Could be human spirits. Here's five human spirits sitting in that row there. Each one of them have a spirit. Discerning of spirits would allow you to know things or sense things about the person that you wouldn't know naturally. Correct? Uh, could be angels. Could be demons. Whatever. Any, any spirits. Any types of spirits. Or so I'll call them just different types of spirits. That's what that gift's for. Okay? The ability to discern spirits. Charisma, iman. What is that? The ability to heal. And that gift is in plural. In the Greek, there's all kinds of different gifts of healing. Always remember that all the gifts of the Spirit are given to the person in degrees. So you can have two people with the same gift, and this one operates more effectively than that one. And this one, and that one. Everybody, like fingerprints, may have the same gift, but the degree or power of the usage of it is different. Everybody's different. It's not a cookie cutter situation where everybody has the same thing. It doesn't work like that. Every person is a unique individual. They have their own unique personality. 
the gifts tailor toward the person's personality their personality <coughs> temperament and They're all different every human being is different Every human being is a unique person People have general categorical things that are similar true, but every single individual person is different and unique and so the gifts operate a little differently within each person. Losa is what? Yeah, that's a gift of tongues. Now remember, there's two types of tongues, and I don't want to spend any time on tongues because everybody gets upset about it. <laughs> but it's easy to figure out if you're not a Baptist. <laughs> If you just keep a couple simple things in mind, so easy to get it. And I'm the first person to admit that Paul's teaching of it in Corinthians, it does appear a bit confusing. Okay? But if you understand that it's a bifurcated concept, this thing here, the gift of tongues, is a gift that you receive from God. That you can give a message in tongues or a message from God in glossa, usually in a, in a church or to a group or something. That's what that one is. The other gift is the personal edification gift, which is different from that. Okay. Every born again Christian, if they want to, can speak in tongues. Anyway, if you want, if you don't want to, then it's not going to happen. Right. Along with the other gifts, if you don't want any of the gifts, you ain't getting them. You're out. Click. Uh, God never forces you to have a gift. Come here, sit there. You got the gift of healing. Boom. <laughs> That's never going to happen. <laughs> never. You. He puts a little desire in your heart. See. And he puts that little love thing in there. Yes. And you have a kind of a sense or feel for a, a certain type of gift. See, The Holy Ghost picks out the gifts and gives them to you. They're tailor-made for you. He's perfect at it. And you have to want it. See, You have to desire it. It has to be kind of a burning thing inside. You just urge. Casual approach to it. Uh, if God wants to give me a gift, he'll give it to me. Okay, that <laughs> crap doesn't work. You're never going to get You're out. You're done. Go home. <laughs> See? I'll get to that scripture in a minute. You've got to seek of the gifts. Amen. See? Because, here's why. They're priceless. And if God just threw them around like frisbees, there you go. Healing. Ah, oh, there you go. Catch it. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm speaking in tongues. Okay. If he just did that, easy come, as Grandpa said, easy go. See? If you don't crave it or come after it, you won't cherish it. And the gifts of the Spirit will be cherished. See? You gotta love it. Prophetia. What is that? It's the ability to speak in the place of God. Yahweh Never comes to the Arizona Deliverance Center. He never comes to the Christ Church of the Valley. He never comes over to the Jehovah Witness Ward. He doesn't come down here. He's busy in heaven. They're, I think they're worshiping him right now, which is what they should be doing. He don't come down here, but he is down here in the presence of the Holy Ghost and in the giftings of the Spirit. These are the gifts that he's given his children to minister here and to help heal the body of Christ and help them and edify them and to win converts. Father wants more people in his family. He's addicted to big families. Father craves more people in his family. When he goes a day and doesn't get enough people, he's unhappy, sad. He wants more people. He's a people addict. He likes rotten people, losers, failures, Amen. people Praise that are God. at the bottom of the barrel. Oh, he runs right over there. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. <laughs> Father's a greedy person. He wants you, you, you. 
if I had less heathen here tonight, this would be going well <laughs> <laughs> Prophecy is the most abused gift in our society now Yeah, back in the 70s during the charismatic renewal tongues was the most abused gift yeah. and uh, in the early church 2,000 years ago it was the same Paul wrote a letter Explaining to him. Hey now this gift of tongues is great, but it has parameters To it and there's there's an opportunity to abuse it and it can cause confusion So here's what I want to do. I'm going to set up these parameters for it. Okay in our society now particularly here in Phoenix Prophecy is the big thing. Oh, everybody wants to prophesy. Okay, and so this gift is the in our society is the worst one and the most abused one in the church. It's just awful. Everybody wants to be a prophet. It's the flavor of the month. They put it on their business cards. Prophet Sally Adams. Yeah. <laughs> if you get a business card, somebody says they're a prophet, find a trash can quickly <laughs> and put that card in that trash can. Okay? You're going to get some bad words. Trust me. If you got the gifts of the Spirit, people will find you. Yes. You don't have to come around telling them about all your wonderful gifts. Oops, I'm going to get some emails now. The legendary British evangelist Smith Wigglesworth was asked, Hey, what kind of gifts did God give you? He says, It's not for me to say what my gifts are. If I have a gift, it'll manifest. If I don't have one, it won't. Okay. Wigglesworth's an anointing was a teeny bit higher than ours. I'm guessing. <laughs> Taking a guess there. Apostle Bobby Sanders. Apostle. Well, thank you, Bobby. Hold on just a minute here. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay, if you got to go around telling people you're an apostle or a prophet, you're not. <clears throat> Interpretation of tongues, there it is. That goes with the gift of tongues. There's two types of tongues, your gift, and then the gift to give a message in tongues. And then the other one is to uh, interpret that message. Uh, hermenia is translation. You translate the message. And it's a special, separate gift from God. It was big in the 70s. Everybody wanted to speak in tongues and interpret it, and they were in the churches pretty frequently. Now it's kind of drifted out. Now it's drift, kind of drifted over to prophecy. Nobody kind of does that too much anymore, which is too bad. All right, miracles, energia, dunamis, those are uh, supernatural events of energy or power. Could be any kind of thing. There's no restriction on, on a miracle. Could be natural, could be spiritual, could be physical. Wow, there's no end to, the, to that. But it's uh, supernatural energy. That's what that Greek word means. And for example, uh, if you stuck your hand and finger in that socket there, you took off the cover and just shoved it on up in there, you would feel a surge come into you. <sighs> See? That would be what? Energy. The Holy Ghost, when he touches a person, uh, he barely touches them at all. I mean, it's just a minor. So the person doesn't blow up. But just a minor. And cancer dies. Just a minor. Oh. Any kind of miracle can happen. Just a. If he never comes in with, with everything. You don't want him to. Okay. If he's got everything, he makes universes. Wow. Out of our leagues. That's what it is. It's dunamis, supernatural power, supernatural energy, works of supernatural, powerful energy is what that Greek phrase means. And the gift of faith is pistis. Now, there's once again, that's bifurcated, like tongues is. When you're born again, at that very instant, you receive a measure of faith. And everybody gets the same one. Click, 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 click. And then it's like a track 
Run to 440 the Holy Ghost hands the baton off to you and you and you and you and you and you and then what happens to your faith after that is determined by the person Everybody starts out at go and Then what happens to that person after that is determined by the person It's called free will so you can become Wigglesworth if you choose or you can backslide and go back into sin and die and go to hell Whatever you choose you get from God what you choose All the gifts of the Spirit are what you choose your choice The Holy Spirit picks the gift out and gives it to you and then you choose Whether you want to use it a lot a little frequently Correct same thing with everything from God it's all up to you. Praise God. You choose. You want to die a spiritual loser? You chose it. You want to be John Lake? You chose it. It's up to you. You decide what happens to your life. On that depressing note, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> There's the two gifts of faith. Okay, the gift of faith, pistis, is a supernatural gift where the person can believe for anything, practically, under any circumstances, even around naggers or naysayers that think they're crazy. And people that have the gift of faith, or general faith, to be honest with you, the people around them think they're nuts. Okay. If you want to be a powerful Christian or amount to a hill of beans spiritually, you got to get used to being a nut. Yeah. You got to use be used to being an outcast. You can't be a regular church person and sit in a pew there and watch your butt go from here to there over there. That, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not that's not the gospel. Spreading butts are not the gospel. <laughs> Sitting around te getting teaching all the time. Oh, good. This teaching here, if you're going to sit here and listen to this and go home and do nothing, I'm going to grieve. My heart's sick. Teaching is not to go do nothing about. You're supposed to go do something. Jesus said, you're my friends if you do what I tell you. See? P many people are ever learning, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. They're always in every seminar. They're always at church. Oh, God, they're churched out. Going to church too much actually causes your faith to go down. Why? Because you become systematically desensitized to truth and it doesn't have an effect on you anymore. If you learn something and don't use it, it's useless. I'll prove it to you. Math. God. Did you take math? I'm terrible at math. Yeah, I had uh, high school pre algebra. And geometry. That was it. And I, I got C's. I went to college. You required to take a math class. Oh, God, what am I going to do? I looked for the weakest math class I could find in college. And it was uh, called uh, College Algebra. One. <laughs> when I saw one, I immediately... I felt God pushing me to that. I wasn't even serving God, but I felt something pushing me to one. Oh, that's good. That's for the dummies. I put in a lot of hard work in that class. I really tried, and I got a B. I couldn't believe it. I don't remember it now as I stand here talking to you. I, I am not even joking. I could not, I don't remember one thing I learned in college algebra. I'm not making that up. I make a lot of stuff up that isn't it <laughs> I don't remember a cotton I don't nothing you know why you know why yes of course I don't use it I don't use math here Satan come out that's not math <laughs> be healed but who cares about a trigger not if you don't use something it becomes useless to you. The gospel is useless 
to American Christians because they're ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. They're always absorbing information and going to constant seminars and listening and learning all the time, and then they go out and they don't do anything. It's worthless. It's useless. It's use the word of God is to be received and done. You got to do it. Do it. If you feel God calling you to, to the healing ministry, and I hope I hope you answer that call tonight. Probably several of you. You got to start doing it. Listen, go home. Get your cat. <laughs> <laughs> they got a crooked tail. Hey, <laughs> be healed. You know, step out, do something. See, don't just sit there and go. Now, what did I learn here in the healing class? Hmm. Well, uh, let's go to Subway. That's not going to work. Go try it. Go use it. Go do it. That's how the gospel works. Good. Hey, Wigglesworth was an expert on faith. He was called the Apostle of Faith. He was always teaching little things like that. You got to exercise your faith with a famous term he used. You got to exercise it. You know, you don't get any better unless you're. Work it out, man. Thinking about stuff doesn't work. You think about it and then you go do it. All right, let's look at them grouping the gifts. Of course, the, the most preachers uh, break them down this way. Prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Those are the focal gifts. Power gifts are? Faith, healing, miracles, right? Wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. How does that work? Let's look. The Holy Spirit is in your spirit, man. And when he entered you at the time you were born again, he brought with him a measure of faith. Paul said that in Romans, right? He gave you that faith. It's permanently yours. You have it, and you own it. It was given to you through grace and mercy. You have it. Every born-again Christian has it, without an exception. Even a backslidden one. They still have their gift of faith. The gifts of the Spirit are also given to you that he wants you to have. But you don't have them now. You think you don't have them. That's not true. You haven't developed them. See, you've got to release what you have. That's the only way it works. The greatest of all the gifts is divine agape, divine love, right? Well, love doesn't do you any good unless you release it to somebody. What good does it do? They don't do any good at all, see? Yeah, anybody married knows that. I love you, honey. Whoa, hold on, time out. <laughs> Get the love over here. That, I love you, honey. It kind of feels good for an eighth of a second, but kids need you to show your love to something, right? You got to do something with it. So what happens? These gifts start in the spirit, man. All the, all the gifts do, and... These gifts come out of your mouth, correct? These gifts come out of what? Yeah, your mind. They come from your spirit, man, to your mind, and then you do whatever with them you need to do, correct? These gifts here come from your spirit, man, and many times come right out of your body. You know, these faith healers, a lot of them have... Weird kind of sensations or different things, you know, it, it's not a cookie cutter thing But it tends some of them the power tends to come out of their hands Some of them can feel it different, you know, usually comes out of your body somehow Not in every case. I'm not trying to Set a precedent here, but you know the generally speaking that's kind of how it works That's why the laying hands on the sick Jesus mentioned he did it himself several times he was 
the healing power came from the spirit man out through him, and the people were healed. Okay? But it all starts in your spirit man. All right, here is a, a, a list of the, of the uh, gifts of the spirit in the book of Acts. You know, I'll just set on this for a second so you can look at it when you go back on YouTube. I uh, put them all down for you there. There's all the gifts of the Spirit were found in Acts. There were two gifts of the Spirit Jesus didn't use, and those were tongues, interpretation of tongues. He used all the others, right? But in Acts, they were all all of them used. All were used. Here's another a list where miracles and healings were noted in the book of Acts. I'll give you a couple seconds on that one. Here's uh, discerning of spirits, faith. The fruit of the spirit I throw in as a bonus. That's not a gift. That's supposed to be a natural release from every born-again Christian, supposedly. If you don't have much of the fruits of the Spirit, we can fix that tonight. That's being blocked by demons. They get in your body. They get in your brain. They block your anointing. They block your fruit. They block your love, your compassion, and so on. Hey, once they're removed, man, you're going to be flowing. Amen. Flowing. Okay? That's what you were called to do. See? I'm prophesying. You're called to flow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at the Lord Jesus, of course. The most unique one of them all, obviously. Now let's take a look at something here. Let me explain that. John chapter 3. The great preacher, John the Baptist, the greatest prophet that ever lived, said, He must increase, I must decrease. Okay? To get your gifts to manifest, you must adopt this concept. You've got to adopt it. You must make this your daily motto. You must be like this weeks and months constantly. You must feel this way all the time. The great John the Baptist had it in spades. He was history's greatest preacher. Superpowered preacher. There aren't any preachers like that anymore on the planet Earth now. One of a kind. But he says something interesting here. He that comes from above is above all. He that is the earth is earthly. He that comes from heaven, of course, is above all. He's talking about Jesus here. And he whom God sent speaks the words of God. True. God does not give the Spirit by measure to Christ. Metron is where we get our British word meter. It's a, it's a portion. Okay? All born-again Christians, no matter who they are, have the Holy Spirit. Everyone who is born again has the Holy Spirit. Okay? Even if you don't speak in tongues, that doesn't matter. You're if you're born again, the Greek phrase is ganeo anathon. It means to be generated or born from above. It's a spiritual experience in your spirit, man. You're born again. If you haven't had that spiritual experience, you're probably a religious false convert. To steal a term from the guy in California, Ray Comfort. He's got a little teaching on false converts. It's brilliant. Uh... I wish he'd kind of use it on himself. But his, the concept is you can't mentally get saved. You can mentally agree with somebody, or you can say Jesus is, wow, he's great. But that doesn't have anything to do with your spirit, man. Okay? So where evangelism falls apart routinely is having somebody say a sinner's prayer and then telling them they're saved. Oh. Boom. What a certified joke that is. And poor Billy Graham, who was a wonderful man of God, never understood what I just said to you. 
Luis Palau, all of them. They never understood it. And that's why they had so many people backsliding from their crusades. Billy Graham estimated he lost 85 to 90 percent of them. And the reason is, you're not a Christian because you said a sinner's prayer and filled out a prayer card and gave it to a guy at a crusade. That's not saved. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be Ganao Anathan, born from above, see? Because he wasn't born again at that time, I don't know if he ever got saved, but I kind of like to think he did. Just my own personal thing. I, I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't there. <clears throat> he didn't even understand what he was talking about. He said, are you crazy? You want to crawl up in your mother's womb again? The guy was nuts. But he wasn't born again, see? But he had enormous intelligence, huge IQ, gasping knowledge of the God, Word of God. See, you can know too much sometimes and end up stupid. Wow, Brother Mike ought to be on YouTube. Each person who's born again, truly born again, has a measure of the Holy Spirit. No one has unmeasured. No one has a Holy Spirit limitless. Nobody has that. Nobody ever has had or ever will have it except one person. Bingo. Okay. And probably the reason for that is a bunch of different things which I don't really want to go into. Uh, but you're not Jesus. No offense. <laughs> Neither am I. Okay? I'm not offended. The level of commitment Christ had, the level of sacrifice, the level of all these other different things, I've never known anyone to replicate. I don't know anyone who's ever done it. I don't believe there is anyone who's ever done it. And when you have the Spirit without measure, every person gets healed that wants healing, and every person gets delivered and wants delivered. There's no failures noted in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not one failure. Everybody got healed that wanted to be healed. Now, the people who didn't want to be healed, scribes, Pharisees, ritualing, ruler, hey, they don't get healed. That's the true today. It was true then. Again, it's all free will and your desire and your interest in God that God honors. But every person that came to Christ got healed. He had the Spirit without measure. Unlimited supply. That's amazing. But the Holy Ghost is so staggeringly powerful that even a teeny portion of it is blowing cancer out of somebody's body. A teeny little thing like that heals broken bones. A little thing like that saves your soul. I mean, just a little touch from him. Huh, it's unbelievable. Scraps of the Holy Ghost. Poof! Bring massive miracles. I'm saying that so you're saying well I can never be like Jesus no you'll never be like Jesus and that's not a bad thing our goal is to be like Christ we're looking to Jesus the author and finisher of our faith but none of us will ever a hundred percent make it. see some people who have religious spirits in their head think they've made it but if you talk to them a little bit oh oops follow them home God something wrong here yeah see Anybody anybody mad at me right now? Just because you will never be exactly like Christ is certainly nothing negative. No, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I mean, this much of the Holy Ghost, man, you're on top of the world. You know, people are coming to see you in droves. You know, assuming your personality is halfway decent. I know some of you, and you're going to be lonely for a while, but let's go on here. All right, in John chapter 1, the gift of knowledge pops up. And listen to this. Jesus saw Nate coming, Nathaniel. And he said, behold, there's an Israelite, and there is no dollars or trickery. Nathaniel was a person who was a straight shooter. He had good character. We don't know how he got it. We don't know really anything about him. 
but the gift of knowledge allowed Jesus to see edu is the Greek word that's used for seeing physically and seeing in the spirit world and you have to look at the context of the text to determine which it is in this one it's in the spirit world Jesus was able to look into Nathaniel and saw in his spirit man and his soul that this guy was a credible person he wasn't like Judas who was double-minded this Nathaniel guy was the type of person that if you asked him a straightforward question unlike a politician Nathaniel would give you a straightforward answer he would he couldn't run for dog catcher now because if you're a politician you got to lie that's part of your job description you have to lie you can't get out of it if somebody asks you a straightforward question you ain't coming with a straightforward answer that's gonna happen Nathaniel no nope, he was on the game you ask him a question he'd tell you he said how you know me he says well wait a minute I saw you under the fig tree same Greek word he saw Edu. he saw you can see natural things I see five five people here you can also see into the spirit world if that makes sense when you have that gift you can see into the other side you go through the dimension into the spirit world correct the natural world is here and the spirit world is here we are I'm standing somewhere in the spirit world but I don't see it because I'm on this side of the dimension if I was able to step to the other side I'd see uh, I'd quickly come back to this side <laughs> Wow not interested I saw you okay see the gift operating here Luke chapter 9 Jesus edu seeing the thoughts of their heart see that they were all fighting over or they were typical church Christians the disciples <clears throat> most of them were losers and they were fighting over who's going to be the greatest. That's a typical church person. I want to be ahead of this person. I teach better than that. I ought to be getting more. So Jesus saw that in the spirit world, in them. He saw their what? Thoughts. Yes. You can see others' thoughts. Mark 6, here's the same gift operating. When evening came, it says uh, the ship was hitting a hurricane. Remember that? Jesus, though, wasn't couldn't see the ship physically, but he saw the ship spiritually. Correct? He saw them toiling and rowing. They had left hours ago, and he was he stayed there. And the wind was contrary to them, and he came to them walking on the sea. Now here you see a, the gift of knowledge and the gift of miracles working at the same time. Walking on, on water is a miracle. You ever have a burst of faith once in a while? You ever have that? The devil helps you with it. He says, man, your faith is great. He builds you up. called flattery. I've done that a few times. Yeah, I tried walking on water a couple times. <laughs> Ooh, that was embarrassing. <laughs> but walking on water, trust me, on just take my just take my word for it. That's a miracle, walking on water, right? Chris Angel can walk on water, but that's a plastic thing he's got under the water there, and he walks on that. Remember him on TV when he was walking? That that was an illusion. This was actually real, and that's a gift of miracles. Mark chapter 2, why does this man speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? So they brought in a guy on the cot, and he's uh, quadriplegic. And uh, Jesus looked down at him with the gift of knowledge and saw that the physical injury wasn't his main problem. 
that it was emotional and He was emotionally ill That was hurting him more than the physical so he said to the kid your sins are forgiving you yeah? Forgiveness is forgiven is the Greek word ephemi. It means to be released from Jesus was saying you Son, I'm releasing you from your sins When you got saved God released you from your sins in the Old Testament. It was a deficient system the atonement in Hebrew means to cover it up It's temporary covered Okay now that Christ is our mercy seat, as Paul explained, your sins don't exist anymore. Amen. So, this woman in the purple here is sinless. Praise God. Jesus. Now, did she sin today in her mind or in her body? Pro probably. But her spirit man is sinless. She was released from her sins. A theme is to release something. Kind of like you would uh, push a boat out to the draw. You released it and let it go. See? I do it all the time in my counseling practice. I try to get this spouse to release that spouse. You say, well, Mike, that can't be that hard. <laughs> You've never been a counselor. You don't know. <laughs> You have no idea. Wow. God released you from your sins. Well, the, the scribes and Pharisees were sitting there and go, wait a minute, this guy's a fraud. He's got blasphemies. Now, what happens then? I said, Jesus did what? Now, this Greek word, epigenosko, means to fully know something, completely know it. As opposed to just knowing something, which is gnosko. Jesus fully understood exactly what they were thinking. They didn't say that out loud. He could see their thoughts. God can see your thoughts. Spirit beings can see your thoughts. Angels can see what you're thinking. They can even get into your dreams. If you don't believe me, ask Joseph. Jesus' stepdad. He had three dreams where angels got into his dreams. Wow, that's amazing. He saw what they were thinking. See that? And he knew what it was in his spirit. See the gift operating? It comes out of your spirit, man. Then he said to them, why are you reasoning these things in your hearts? He calls them out on it. How's this going so far? Okay, let's keep going then. John 6, miracles. Okay, The sea arose by a great wind. Everybody's read these stories, so I'm just going through them a little quicker so we can get to the question section. A lilaps is a hurricane. That's an above water storm. Okay, like they have in Florida a lot. They rode, rode out about uh, 30 furlongs. A furlong is a stadion. And it came from this, the Greek word came from the Colosseum, Roman Colosseum. This is a stadium, where we get our English word stadium. And a stadium was about yay long. But in other areas, like Ephesus and so on, other people had stadiums. Okay? So a, a stadium was not a precise unit of measure. For example, like we have a mile, a foot, a yard, a meter. That's precise. If you say meter or yard in the United States, Germany, or Australia, everybody knows what that is because math, as you know, is a universal language. Everybody speaks the same language in math. 2 plus 2 in Siberia is the same as 2 plus 2 in South Phoenix. So a, so a stadium, 
a stadium is an approximate measure. A furlong is an approximate measurement. Okay, so what we're saying here is, you know, they were four, four miles or so out to sea when they hit a hurricane, is what's happening here. And they were afraid. Yeah, no kidding. And they saw Jesus, again, using the gift of miracles. He's walking on the sea to save them. And they were scared. Okay? You got to remember that the gifts of the Spirit frighten people. If you don't have an understanding of the Spirit world and you don't have the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit are startling to unsaved people. They're shocking, see? And the gift of tongues, for example, was, a, was shocking and was causing a problem in the early church because everybody was so excited about the gift, they were so happy that they were all speaking in tongues in church and you couldn't get a sermon in and there was mass confusion. Paul said, hey, dude, click it. Okay, you got these nice gifts. That's great. Now just give three messages in tongues and don't give messages in tongues unless there's an interpreter there. He said, we don't want everybody bursting out with a message in tongues. So what he was trying to do there was fix the chaos of it. Right? And so any gift of the Spirit that you release and develop, which I hope you'll start tonight, will cause other people to look at you weird. <laughs> Because the supernatural things of God don't fit into a carnal mind. Right. See, the, in fact, my carnal mind is at enmity against God. That's the Greek word ekthros. It means hostile. The carnal mind is an enemy of God. It fights against the things of the Spirit. That's why the mind has to be completely renewed in order to develop these gifts. You can't have them with a carnal mind. And then suddenly, look at this miracle, teleportation. My God, the ship just, boop, bang, went X amount of miles, and they're at the dock. That's what I call docking a boat. <laughs> wow. All right, Mark chapter 4. There arose a great storm. Same Greek word, a lilaps, that's an above-ground storm, like a hurricane. The waves beating in the ship. Jesus was asleep in on a pillow. There's your gift of faith in operation. See, faith and fear never work in the same spot. It's either one or the other. If you have faith, fear crashes. If you have fear, faith crashes. Fear means your faith sucks. Faith means your fear has been overcome. People who have anxiety disorders and they worry all the time, which are, by the way, are running rampant in our society. There isn't a week go by somebody didn't come in to see me for counseling and they have an anxiety disorder. People who have anxiety disorders have low faith. Jesus didn't have an anxiety disorder in the middle of a hurricane. He went seep seeps. <laughs> Knowing 100% total faith pissed us without even a doubt that he was covered and taken care of. Amen. Didn't matter whether Hurricane or the Russians. <laughs> I, I threw that in for myself. <laughs> so here you see the gift of faith in action here. Faith, he's sleeping. Believe me, that takes a lot of faith during a hurricane. And it says, we woke him up and they said, they didn't have that faith. So they were panicking. They said, did Oscalos, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? See, they misinterpreted. So when you use your gifts, you got to have a low offense sponge in your soul because people are not going to see you the way God sees you. They're going to prejudge you or nitpick you or criticize you or be confused around you or feel uncomfortable around you. If you're using your, the gifts of the Spirit... It's a love thing between you and God. It's not so you can get approval from other people or you can get them to kiss your butt. <clears throat> That's not the purpose of the gifts. Correct? But you have to understand that these spiritual things don't fit in 
to carnal Christians or with sinners. They don't settle well. They find them confusing. They have all kinds of nitpicking carnal questions about them. So they misinterpreted Jesus. They interpreted sleeping as not caring. But when actually it was actually sleeping by faith. He wasn't worried about the hurricane or any other thing going on because of his faith in Jehovah or Yahweh, right? Amen. But they misinterpreted it. People will misinterpret you with your gift. They will not understand you. And that's okay with you because that's not your job to make people understand you. You're, you're, you please the Lord. You don't please <coughs> people. You're not a people pleaser, see? People pleasers have something on their backs. Have you ever seen them? It's about that wide. It's yellow. People pleasers are yellow cowards. And they walk around like this so they can get close to you and kiss your butt. Okay, your job's not to kiss people's butts or have a yellow streak down your back. You answer to the, to the Lord. You don't answer to everybody else. He woke up and said, hey, I'm not, it's not that I don't care. I like to sleep when I'm on the water. <laughs> Jesus always fell asleep. You ever notice that? Every time he got in the water, kunk, he was out. <laughs> right? Yeah. I learned that from him. I got this machine in my bedroom. And you punch different buttons. And different noises come out like this one's raining that one's a uh, seashore and I push that and turn on turn it on and it kind of makes me go to sleep better quicker you know what I mean I'm not saying you should get one I'm just saying that's that's what I got in my house you don't have to get one although we are selling those in the bookstore <laughs> Jesus did the same thing on the water. As soon as he'd get on a boat and it started going like that, clunk, he was out. And here you see him rebuking the wind. Now this was uh, another, again, again, combination of miracles here. The pedamao is the Greek word he always used when describing Jesus rebuking demons or Satan. So here we get a little bit of insight that this storm was caused by the devil in the same way the storm was caused in Job when he murdered Job's family. He murdered him with a tornado. Remember that? Well, he was trying to murder Jesus the same way, just like he was trying to get Job. So he rebukes the wind, okay? The wind was a tool of Satan to murder him because the wind was throwing the water up. The water then was going to drown the boat and they were going to die. The wind itself is not evil. There's nothing evil about wind. Wind is not alive. You can't talk to the wind. If you are talking to the wind, please come down to the altar tonight. <laughs> we need to see you here. Matthew chapter 8. Now here's the gift of healing in, illustrated. A leper comes to Jesus worshiping him. He says, Lord, if you, if you want to, you can make me clean. Guess what happens? He touches him. And I want, I want to be clean. Now, here's another uh, act of healing, gift of healing and gift of faith. Because you don't touch somebody with a communicable disease. But Jesus' faith was so high, he knew the disease wasn't going to transfer to him. Lepers were not allowed in their society for obvious reasons. Communicable disease you can have a leper plague if you don't get rid of these lepers So they all they all had to leave town and live in certain areas Right now uh, Diseases are breaking out in downtown LA among the homeless. You see that in the paper Communicable diseases are cracking up among the homeless because the conditions are so filthy So dirty well he touched him which he never did and he, he, Jesus never got leprosy. Why? Faith, gift of healing. You know, it happened to Paul. He got bit, threw the thing off in the fire. If you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. 
that doesn't mean that you can do anything to your body and drink anything you want. You know, let's say you get you wake up in the morning, you know, I like to have a nice glass of rat poison. Honey, can you get okay, that's not what's happening there. That's you're gonna die. Okay? God's not gonna heal you. You're you're not gonna get protected. Okay. That's not what that's talking about. It's talking about an enemy trying to poison you from spreading the gospel. And so God said, I'll protect you. Well, Jesus knew he was protected, so he touches this dying leper, and he gets healed. Right? Luke 14. What is Udropikos? What is that? Okay, behold, there was a man before him which had Udropikos. Jesus said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? They wouldn't say anything. So he took the guy and healed him. What is that disease? It's elephantitis. It's a horrible disease. This girl on, the, on the, the right has that disease, and that's what that guy had in the uh, synagogue. So again, that's a gift of healing. He touched the guy. Boop. Immediately, his whatever limb it was. It could be any limb. It's not just legs, but I, I just use that as an example. And it disappeared right in front of everybody. Yeah, gift of healing. Amen. Fantastic. Praise God. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew 15. Let's check it out. Here's the gift of healing, and it covers any kind of healing. Now, once again, as I mentioned earlier, if you have the gift of healing and you have it and you have it, it may manifest differently. Okay, so one person may have a super-powered gift of healing, another person may have a powerful one, another person may have an introductory one. It varies between people, okay? With Jesus, it was always at maximum level. He had the Spirit without measure. So, boom, everybody got healed, no matter what happened to him. So they brought everything to him, anything to him, even dead bodies. Kolos are people who limp, who have just limping, lower extremity disabilities. Blind people, of course. Dumb people. That doesn't mean people are stupid. Kofos is a Greek word. It means to have a hearing impairment or a speech impairment, not an IQ impairment. We don't use that term anymore in, in our society. That's an old English term used in the King James Bible. Maimed. Kolos. What is that? Those are amputees. So Jesus, somebody, they brought somebody with no left leg. There's a leg. Leg pops up. Wow. Praise God. Uh, this guy had got his arm cut off in an industrial accident. Give me your hand. Boop, a hand pops up. Somebody got their eye poked out. Bonk. Bang! An eye pops in his head. See that? In in nowadays they call them creative miracles. That's the current term for them. What's this telling you? Well, it's telling you, listen, the Holy Ghost has no limitation. He's only limited through the vessel he's working with. See? Yeah. So if you can, I'm giving you a hint here. If you can crank this thing up, you can become a killer. For God is no respecter of persons. You are all eligible for miracles. Amen. Many others, and he cast them down at Jesus' feet. Now, this is a Holy Ghost revival we've never seen before. Ripto means to throw somebody. There were so many people rushing in to get healed, and they were getting healed so fast, they were throwing people at him <laughs> to get healed. Can you imagine that? At a Benny Hinn crusade or something, you got to stand in line, stand there properly, walk respectfully. In Jesus' meetings, it was Katie bar the door. It was nuts. They were throwing disabled people at him. <laughs> Boom, they'd hit the ground, bang, healed. That one would get up and run. Boom, here's a guy on a stretcher. Ripto means to throw at them. You following the text? Yeah, it doesn't, it loses it in the translation. Okay. I imagine they threw dead bodies at him. Seriously, I think they probably did. They probably drug grandpa. <laughs> oh, boy. 
<laughs> Grandpa wakes up, runs home. <laughs> Unbelievable. So that's the Holy Ghost running there. There he is. That's him. You, can, you can't see the Holy Ghost. No one's ever seen him, but you can sure follow his trail. Matthew 22. The Pharisees took counsel in order to pagis. What is that? That's a trap that you don't see. And the best example of it is, is poachers in Africa. They'll dig a big hole and then they put all these branches and stuff on it. And then they put food over there or hang food here. And then a lion or something comes along. Boop! They fall into this uh, pit. And then they, they capture them. That's a pegis, that pit. You didn't see it. You're walking along. Boop! You're gone. Well... That's what they're trying to do to Jesus. They're trying to trick him. So the devil sent his disciples and they said, Teacher, we know that you are true and you teach the way of God in truth. Now, this brings up an important point. Now, you're going to get your gifts going starting tonight. And I'm prophesying. Tonight, you're going to make a turn. And things are going to start getting closer and closer for you. Uh, when that happens, the devil's going to treat you just like he done Jesus. He's going to come to you with flattery. And in our deliverances around here, this issue is so frustrating and so tiring. I see it all the time. I'm so sick of it. The person comes the first night or the second night, boom, they get this massive deliverance. And then the devil always comes in with the same pitch. Man, you're delivered. You killed us. We're all gone. We're out of here. You kicked us clear down the street. My God, you're rubbing our nose in it. The devil, once he sees you start to manifest your gifts, which will start after the night, he'll start giving you flattery. God, you're a killer. I mean, you're anointed. Oh boy, he'll come to you with all kinds of beautiful statements. Man, they're fabulous. They're doing it to him. See him setting him up? No, you can't set somebody up when he has a gift of wisdom. Neither do you care for any, and you do not regard the person of men. Hear the flattery? What do you think? Should we pay taxes to Goofy or not? <laughs> Jesus perceives their wickedness. Gnosko understands it. He understands their wickedness through the gift of knowledge. And he says, why are you tempting me, you hypocrites? He looked into their souls like he did Nathaniel. And he saw a credible man of God with a good character in Nathaniel. And he looked into them spiritually and saw hypocrites. Same gift. Same gift. Two different results. So they brought him a denarian. And he says, Who's, whose picture is that? There's a denarian they found in the uh, Palestine area, the Middle East. I don't know, millions of these. These are all over the place, these little coins. They're really neat. And they said, the Caesars. And then, okay, give it. Here's the gift of wisdom running nice and smooth. And then what happened? Well, they, came, they went back to the Pharisees and said, why do you bring him here? Never a man spoke like this man. No. Listen, you're, the gifts that you have, and everybody here has some gifts. Nobody has nothing. The Holy Ghost doesn't work with nothing. He always, everybody has some gift. At least one. Or more, usually more. Everybody. Hey, people are not going to understand that gift. They're, they're not going to appreciate it. They're going to try and criticize you. If you're in church and you have gifts, this certain group here will be jealous of you. There's a lot of church jealousy of people that have gifts. Natural gifts and spiritual gifts. You know, if you've got a nice singing voice, people, when they see you personally... They're complimentary, but behind your back, it's darts. Well, she was a little off-key. <laughs> what are they really saying there? 
I can't sing like that. Darn it to hell. That's what they're really saying. Yeah. So you got to understand that you may be temporarily kind of a, a loner, somebody on an island. When you get your gifts going, you may not have a big crowd around you saying, keep going, that a boy. It's a lot of jealousy there. See? Yeah, they're envious of you. See, because you have to pay a price for these gifts. You have to make some sacrifices. And they don't have the ability, the guts, or the courage to make those sacrifices. So, so they're jealous of you. Yeah. Right? Amen. Same thing in athletics. One athlete's jealous of the other one because this one made a bigger sacrifice than that one. Right? Okay. Let's keep going if we can. Jesus... Luke chapter 7, faith. Here's the gift of faith. Jesus came near the gates of Naim. They were carrying out a dead man. That was mistranslated, actually a boy. The son of his mother, for he was a widow. So now this woman is down to nothing in her society. There weren't any jobs for women back then. Uh, it was a man-dominated world, uh, the opposite of what we have now. And <laughs> women were at the bottom of the social structure. Here, not, they didn't have women's lib back then. And women didn't have the right to vote. They didn't have the right for nothing. And uh, so she now has no husband. They had, they had all the jobs. And now the son, who was to take care of the family, he's now dead. So she's, she's finished. She has to live in poverty or off relatives for the rest of her life. And guess what? When the law... When the Lord saw her, not the dead boy, her, he had what? Splachnitomai. What does that mean? That means to have a pain in your stomach over the pain of someone else. It's compassion. A person that has true compassion can kind of feel what that person's going through. In counseling, we call it empathy, not sympathy. Empathy is kind of seeing something from somebody else's perspective. You have to have good empathy to be a counselor. Compassion is when you, they ache and you kind of ache. Jesus was aching when he saw the dead boy. No. The mother is who he focused on. Notice that? And he told her to weep not. The Greek word is klio, which means she was wailing, uh, having a crying jag. Uh, Dracul means to kind of shed some tears quietly, kind of like you would at a funeral, just kind of weep a bit. This woman was not doing that, see? The text doesn't really illustrate what was going on there. She was in a traumatic state when he walked up to her. And he was feeling her pain. He was hurting in the gut. And he said to the boy, arise. And then what does he do? What's he do next? He, <clears throat> what he does next is he gets a better clicker. <laughs> the dead kid sits up. Okay, now that's something you don't see every day. But what did Jesus do? Once again, it, the focus is not on the kid. It was on mother. Seeing this? Notice that the gifts of the Spirit always follow God's true will. The gifts of the Spirit focus on what Father wants done. And Father wasn't worried about the kid. He was worried about the mother. She had made him ugh. When, in 1996, when my youngest daughter, Tracy, my partner, she's watching tonight, by the way, when she got in her car accident, she was brain dead up at John C. Lincoln Hospital in, uh, up here in Sunny Slope, that way. And uh, 
long story short, by the time I got to the hospital, she was still in an uh, uh, emergency room, and they told us to go upstairs to ICU and that they would bring her up there. Well, I was uh, standing out in the hall up against the wall here, and the elevator was right there. And while I was standing around there, I was shaking like this. I was shaking like a dog, scared. Uh, the elevator door opens, boom, and these fi the uh, firemen or the ambulance people, I can't remember who, was, brought her out on the stretcher here. And I looked at the person, didn't know who it was because her head, about the size of a basketball, she had hit the ground at 55 miles an hour or something, and that was it. She was, she was gone. Well, I recognized her nose when they brought her around to take her in the ICU door there. As soon as I looked down and recognized her own nose, clunk, I fainted. And I collapsed on the tile. What was I doing there? Listen, your soul feels pain in its universe. If you have love or if you have compassion, you can feel hurts in other people. And that's what happened to Jesus. He, oh my God, look at that poor woman weeping. He did, oh, he had this pain in his guts. And then he gave the boy back to the mother. Luke 13. There was a woman in the synagogue had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. She was so bent over she couldn't even stand up anymore. This is the gift of discerning of spirits now, right? He saw or sensed in the spirit world that this was not a medical condition. It was a demonic condition. One third of all Jesus' healings were demonic. They were demonic illnesses. In my little book, Atonement Healing there, I went through every healing in the New Testament and I bifurcated them into the demonic category or the medical category. So you can see the difference. Some healings need deliverance, some healings need healing. Jesus knew the difference because he had all the gifts of the Spirit. So he looked at this person and saw that's not a medical condition. That's a demonic condition. A spirit got in her body 18 years ago and deformed her like scoliosis, right? And when Jesus saw her, he called her, you are loose from your infirmity. And boom, the devil came right out. We've had three or four of these scoliosis cases healed, and they get healed immediately. It's not physical therapy. It's a spirit twisting the person like you would tw twist a disc rag like that they twist your body parts and they deform you rheumatoid all that stuff it's all demonic all right the greatest gift of all is yes divine agape divine agape means unconditional divine love that means that no matter what you do or what you say you are always loved the same so if you're serving God and you're booming you are loved if you're backslidden and back on porn, you're loved. Both are loved at the same level. Praise God. If you're worshiping God, Jesus, I love you. You're loved. If you're telling God, hey, here's what I got for you. Shove that. You're loved exactly the same. Whether you're worshiping God or cursing him, you're loved the same. Praise God. Why is that? A divine agape is Unconditional. See, human agape is it's all conditional. So if somebody says, I love you, uh, you know, I hope they do. And <laughs> but if it's human love, it's subject to change. Okay? Divine agape is not subject to change so if you come to the Lord and say you know something you're a major disappointment to me you suck and I'm out of here and I'm never coming back 
Hey, when you walked out the door, love followed you. And when you took your last breath, love was there. Because it's unconditional. That means that there's no conditions on it. I can go deep on you if I need to. <laughs> Human love is conditional. The kid that acts better, you know, there's kind of a little bit more. That one's kind of settling better in here. This one who's can't stop getting pregnant and smoking crack. Mm. They're kind of wearing me out. God's love don't get worn out. You didn't hear me. A 50-year backslider I saw get saved at the House of Healing one night. Backslid for 50 years. Holy Ghost just took him back in a heartbeat. Praise yeah. God. Now that guy repented and fell on his knee. Now, you know, he's not going to run you down. But I'll tell you what, when you come back, you're in. No matter what you did. Yes, sir. Praise God. We were just down in, in uh, Tucson at Teen Challenge, and uh, Karina and Robert and Kelly and Kelly uh, were praying for some of the guys in the pantry. You. It is a big pantry. You've been down there? Can you saw Teen Challenge? Uh, so, here's the deal. The, the pantry, no offense, it was not a very attractive place in the pantry. I went back there with a guy. And, actually it was kind of ugly back there. <laughs> and there wasn't any place to sit. It was certainly not set up for a prayer meeting. In the pantry. <laughs> the Holy Ghost didn't care. Demons flying out of the guys. He don't care whether you're in the pantry or you're at the cathedral tomorrow. Yeah. And them addicts, those guys are super sinners. You ever met an addict? Oh, yeah. They're professional liars. Yeah. They lie all the time. They steal. They look you right in the face and tell you the biggest lie you've ever heard. Right in the face. They don't care. Love follows them through every lie, every crack hit, every needle. Love's there. And when they're ready to turn, Holy Ghost is there. They were taking people in the pantry who wanted to turn, and boom, they got the Spirit of God hit them. Demons flying out on the cereal. <laughs> Devils falling on the potatoes. No matter. No matter. No matter. See, you can do deliverance in a pantry because demons don't eat potatoes. They're not interested. Okay? So that's how that works. <laughs> First Corinthians 13, though I speak with tongues of men and angels that do not have agape, that was kind of mistranslated in the King James Bible, unconditional Love, I am like some instrument just plays and don't mean anything. Clanging around on, on the drums. Beating on the drums because you don't want to work all day. Though I have prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith, translation, although I have the gifts of the Spirit without measure, so I could remove mountains, literally, but if I don't have unconditional divine love, I am Nothing. Can you imagine that? Having all those gifts and being a nothing? That's incredible. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, but don't have agape, unconditional divine love, it doesn't do me any good. That's amazing. Gandhi died for nothing. <laughs> Can you believe that? He was a great man. Super smart. A good person. I mean, Gandhi was a super great person. Absolutely. You ever read his story? Wow, he was a powerful human being. When he died, he had nothing. Nothing. He was lost. He was a Hindu. You can give your body to be burned, and it will do you nothing. 
I re retranslated that. This is the Brother Mike version. Christians can speak in tongues, understand all mysteries, move mountains, be generous givers. They can feed the poor and sacrifice their lives. They can do all these things and not have love and end up with nothing. Listen to me carefully. Love is the first gift you got to get, not the nine. The nine are going to fizzle out on you if you don't have the tenth one. Unconditional love for people. I learned that years ago. I learned it as a counselor. When I left the secular world, I did not love any of those clients. I was using them to make money. I mean, I cared about them, but I didn't love them. Yeah. I didn't love them. But I had to be renovated in my mind. I had to have my mind renewed so that no matter what somebody did in their past, when they came in to see me now, I take it from square one. It doesn't matter who that person is. Pedophile, rapist, murderer, doesn't matter. I've seen them all. And I take it from square one. Where are we going with this person? What can I do to help? How am I going to fix this? What can I do to facilitate? Can I get this person just one step closer to the Holy Ghost? What can I do? What can I say? I'll do and say anything in a counseling session. If you've been in them, you know. I'll cry with you. I'll yell at you. I'll sit there quietly and say nothing for an hour. I'll do anything. I'll get up and make a big deal out of something. Anything I can do to get you to take a step closer to the Spirit of God. I mean, I'll go Robert De Niro on you. <laughs> I should have been Academy Award winner. I got all the skills. All of them. Oh, yeah. I've even physically got up in people's faces. Yell at them. You know you're gonna die. I'm right there. I've done anything. I'll do anything. I'll cry. I'll help. I'll I'll beg. I'll yell. What do you need me to do? Sometimes I even break out the slapping anointing. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy girl. <laughs> Brother Mike, I got an anointing. I'm gonna call down the fire of God. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> No. Listen, you got to care about people and you can't care if you don't have the Holy Ghost. I didn't have it as a secular counselor. I did not love those people. Love comes from the Holy Spirit just like the gifts come from Him. You say, well, I don't love people. That's a relationship problem between you and the Holy Ghost. It's not between you and people. As Rodney Dangerfield used to say, people are nuts. And people are not your problem. They never are. It's a spiritual issue. See? It's always a spiritual issue. It's between you and the Spirit of the Lord. Well, they did this and they said that. People always do that and say that. It's an eternal wave of insane people. They're everywhere. See, that's not your problem. Your parents weren't your problem, your relatives, your spouse. The problem is you and the Spirit of God. You need a better relationship to learn. He'll handle that for you if you'll handle this for him. If you don't like people and you don't have compassion for them, counseling is not your career. You'll burn out. People drive you flat out crazy. And when I was a secular counselor, it was common for counselors to go get counseling. Yes, therapists get, they have their own therapists. Absolutely. I think too many people saw too many people. People are nuts. Period. Scary. <laughs> so you need a divine intervention to be able to handle people. That's what Jesus had. 
See, he handled all these crazy people. So he knew that it was spiritual going on behind him. He knew they had demons. He knew that it was lusts. And it was their flesh. He understood people. The Bible says he knew what was in man. Well, you've got to develop that too. And you can develop by, by loving them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you become a doormat or become abused or take beatings. No, that's not love. That's codependency. Real love causes you to do what's right, even if it's, as they say in the counseling business, tough love. Tough love is as good as loving love. I better get off that subject. You can do all those things. Translation. See, it's not the gifts that you're hunting for. It's the giver of the gift. See? So if you're good on the, with the giver, the gifts will start taking off pretty easy. Love is the greatest gift of all. Love saved your soul. Love kept you from Satan's power. Love translated you from darkness to light. Love translates you from the rapture here to the glory there. It's all love. Everything's love. That's the number one gift. Number one, by far. The other, the other nine are way, way below it. Way below. Now, I'm not talking romantic love. That's, that's the Greek word eros. That's a different story, you know. If you find some chick bootalicious, trust me, that's not agape love. Okay, that sounds like a little lust of the flesh popping up there. Oop, that's love. Oh, I love you. Oh, boy, red flag. Whoa. I'm talking about a different kind of love. Here. Correct? Agape, unconditional love. Here's what it's like. It has a tremendous... Supernatural power. It never fails. Never fails. Prophecies, they will, Catergale, will be abolished someday. Okay? When we're in heaven, nobody has the gift of prophecy because it's not necessary. You already know everything. Tongues will see. There's no, nobody's in heaven speaking in tongues. You don't need a self edification gift in heaven. Dude, you're in heaven. <laughs> You're already edified to the max. These are earthly things, not stuff when you're in heaven, correct? Knowledge, gnosis is what? Human knowledge, right? It will, same Greek word, become abolished someday. Of course it's going to be abolished someday. My human knowledge is limited and carnal here on this earth. I will always have limitations. As a person, I will always have mental limitations. I am not God. I am a human being. Hey, I just ruined several of your, your weekend, but listen. <laughs> you are not there yet. See, none of us have arrived in eternal glory. When we get there, we will know as we're known. We will have gorgeous bodies. Can you imagine that? Getting rid of this crappy thing? <laughs> wow. Human, have you ever looked at a human body? <clears throat> it's super ugly. Particularly when you get my age, you get in your 60s and 70s. Dude, you're, you look, I, when I get in my room at night <laughs> to take my clothes off to go to bed, I turn the light out. <laughs> because I don't want to see this sagging, that's falling, this is drooping. I don't want to look at it. When I get to heaven, man, I'm going to be prancing around my mansion, naked, <laughs> posing, different. I can't wait to get rid of this crappy body. All of us have glory ahead of us. Amen. See? All of us are going to be looking good. Can you imagine that? Just looking great. Nothing drooping, no old age. My skin, when I got in my 60s, started to look like a dried up alligator <laughs> I used to have nice smooth sweet my skin used to smell good when I was young anybody here ever been young I used to smell now I I look like somebody dug me up in heaven I I got my skin back whatever I'm, I'm looking good man. 
This is gone pew <laughs> Think about it friends. We've got glory ahead of us Amen. Okay? Amen. And this crappy little world is but a blip on the screen sacrifice it and go get these gifts and run your uh, reward total through the roof in heaven People who do the things of God now get massive rewards in heaven Massive rewards and it's not how we look at it. It's how God looks at it. So if he calls Kenneth Copeland in uh, a Nurses aid and God says this is what I want you to do and this is what I want you to do and Kenneth Copeland does 75% of what God wanted him to do and everybody knows him all over the world But this nurse's aide did 80% of what God told her to do in heaven Copeland's here the nurse's aide is there Amen. Amen. Whatever you're called to do the percentage of what you're doing for God is the determining factor in glory it's not what we see. Amen. So somebody here, exactly, the first will be last, the last will be good. This person here who no one ever heard of could end up with a greater reward than Billy Graham. Amen. You see that? Because God called Billy Graham, I want you to be the world's proclamator. And let's say he did that to the best of his ability, and it was 87%. Now I want you to be a caregiver and a lover of people. Let's say it's 90%. That girl or man gets a bigger reward than Billy Graham. Even though everybody <laughs> saw him, no one saw them. See, God doesn't look like man looks. You're in a great spot tonight to crank these gifts up. You truly are. We know in part, as I was just saying, saying, meros is the Greek word for a portion or a section or a share, you know, almost like a pie. Here, you get a piece, you got a piece. When I was a kid, I would look and see the size of the pieces. <laughs> and I wanted a bigger piece, see? Carnal. That was a carnal thing. Actually, it was cherry pie, and that's not carnal. That's kind of divine in a way. But <laughs> when you profit, if you have all these gifts, let's say you got all the gifts, all 10 of them, and you've maxed out on them, there's still stuff you don't know. You're not going to know everything until you get to glory, and then you will be known as you're known. And there'll be no more questions. You already know everything. See? You ever meant to know it all? <laughs> well, the ones in heaven are humble. The ones on earth here, their pains in the. Ugh. We prophesy in part, but when that which is teleos complete is come, then that which is in part or a portion, portioned out, will be abolished. Nobody has the gift of healing in heaven. Why? There's nobody sick there. It's a useless gift. When I was a child, Anapius, I understood as a child. I thought as a child, Paul said. Then he says, the Greek word for children, older children, is techno. Anapius is a what? A nightmare on Elm Street. Have you ever had a two-year-old? They get into stuff just because you told them not to. <laughs> they had no interest in that until you told them not to get into it. They're right over there getting into it, drooling on it, throwing it down, breaking it, pooping on it, everything. <laughs> Paul said, when I was a toddler, I thought like a toddler. But he says, <clears throat> but he says, when I became an anir, a husband, I abolished Childy things and a few of you wives are screaming Please God <laughs> See your husband's a goof because he never got out of childhood He still acts like a kid He still runs back to mommy 
<laughs> okay, when you get married, you become one flesh here. You leave your parents behind. Get your mother-in-law out of the house. <laughs> a husband is mature and has responsibilities and has a job and people to take care of, etc., etc. Toddlers don't have anything to do but drive you nuts. <laughs> So he's saying, when I was a toddler, that's how I thought as a toddler. I went around drooling on things, pulling them down. But when I became an, a husband and I became responsible, I'm responsible for me and my wife and my kids and so on, etc. See what Paul's saying here? Now we see through an esoptron is a mirror. And it's what? Enigma. It's where we get our English word right. Enigma. An enigma is a concept that doesn't come in too clearly, correct? I see things fuzzy here, Paul said. Now remember, this is Paul, the greatest Christian ever lived. He didn't know everything. He had the greatest anointing of any Christian ever lived. He said, but there, he says, when I get there, this is Paul talking, not some local pastor here. Then I will see everything face to face. It'll be right here. I don't have to look through anything to see anything. Oh, it's clear as a bell. <clears throat> it's right there. The point he's making here is that when you get your gifts going, you're not going to know everything or understand everything about the people, about the use of the gift, about how the gift works. You won't understand everything. That's okay. It's okay not to understand everything. It's okay. Keep going. You'll learn it later. Don't quit. Keep going. Then I will see things, he said, face to face. Now, he says, Maris again, a share. I have a portion of knowledge now, right? But, he says, same Greek word we had earlier, Epigonosco, I will fully understand there. Fully understand. Now you may understand something, but you don't totally and completely understand it. The Holy Ghost does 100% of the time. We don't. And that's by design. We're not supposed to know everything. See? You walk by faith, not by sight. You walk by faith, not because you know everything. You're not supposed to know everything. But you will when you get the glory. Right? That's what he's saying here. Now, he says, not in glory, but now, abides faith, pistis, elpis, what is that? Hope. Hope is future tense. Right? And agape. Unconditional love, which is the biggest one, my zone, which is the big, big dog. It's love, the greatest of all the gifts. Love. That's what he's saying. What's blocking you releasing your gifts? Well, let's take a quick look. Ephesians chapter 4 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. That's the Greek word lupeo. It means to make him sad. Do not make the Holy Spirit sad. The Holy Spirit is capable of being sad. Over something you said or did. He can be hurt. First Thessalonians 5. Do not subin me. Quench the spirit. If I had a match and I went like this, that's subinomy. The Holy Spirit's trying to move and you're quenching him. What do we call that? Church. <laughs> I came out of the Assembly of God religion, and I've been to countless number of church services, revival, seminar, church. I've seen it all. Or seen almost all of it. When I started the House of Healing, I said to myself, now how am I going to structure this House of Healing thing to get the Holy Ghost to move at every service? How am I going to do it? Well, I, I sat down, and I think I was at Jack in the Box the day I did it. I made a list 
of all the things that we did in church. Literally, literalist, one, two, three, four. Preaching, teaching, take an offering, make announcements, altar calls, sing songs. I wrote them all down. Okay? And while I'm sitting there praying, a thought comes into my head, do the opposite. <laughs> Golly, I like to pooped out a breakfast jack. <laughs> I th and I got to thinking about it. I said, my God, that's a divine revelation just for Mike. This isn't for everybody. I got to do the opposite. And I did. I threw every concept of church I knew in the trash. All the years I've been in ministry, every bill's been paid. Then some. I have never had a teaching on giving. Not one. I never had a teaching on prosperity. Not one time. I've never taken an offering. God Almighty. I have never done anything I saw at church. I've never had a trip to Disneyland for the youth. <laughs> I've never had a Christmas play. I've, I, I trashed it. Why? Because I wasn't interested in building an empire and raking in money for myself. I actually took no salary. Instead of being Kenneth Copeland and pre-flow dollar where you sc scrape every nickel out of every sap you get in the door so you can spend it on a luxury vacation and a limousine and a jet. I took the opposite approach. I'll take no salary. So the devil will never be able to accuse me of stealing money from God. Amen. I'm scandal proof. Yeah. Now I will admit I, I came home and told my wife that she was none too happy. <laughs> she wasn't excited. Look, all I did was let's teach the word of God. Let's have altar calls and let's let the Holy Ghost do whatever he wants. Amen. Anything can happen. So anything that happened. I just adjusted to it instead of trying to control the thing. Is this making any sense? Amen. I'll never forget the day. I told you this story ten times before. I was at the Dream Center in Scottsdale. And we had had a mass altar call. That's what they do. They, they pick a subject and they come on down. Let's have a word of prayer. So everybody comes down at the mega church. They all stand down there. And then they lead them in these... Repairs. Blah 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 blah. Everybody repeats them. Blah 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 blah. Then they go out to dope, and then they don't do anything. They just say, "Okay, don't look at me like you've never been in church." Okay, I've been in church millions of times. Okay, holy don't play that. When we get all down there, and all of a sudden, way down at the other end, some guy starts growling. I lean forward and look down there. I'm holding my wife's hand. I said, honey, look at that poor guy down there. He's chock full of demons. He really needs help. As soon as that guy started growling down there, four ushers were on, on him like a dog on table scraps. They carted him out the dough so fast you wouldn't even believe it. Why? Because the church people, the rest of us quacks, we don't feel comfortable around somebody who's in deep trouble. And we don't want to have anything to do with the devil. So they got him out to keep our prayer time sanctified. So we finished up our prayers. Well, before the prayers were done, I get a tap on my shoulder. And one of the ushers is there and said, Brother Mike, we've got an incident over here. Can you come in? Yeah, yeah, I'll come in. So I take <laughs> going. The guy's on the floor, they're holding him down, you know the routine. And uh, to my utter amazement, it was like I saw the Red Sea part. My wife attacks the guy. <laughs> if, you, if you knew my wife, and they're laughing in there because they know her, it was, uh, that's out of character. She started barking at that devil and telling him to come out. And I go, 
well, I'm not going to get in the way of that, so I just step back. So I don't want her pointing her finger at me <laughs> by accident. <laughs> and it was about 45 minutes later, and <clears throat> the guy was delivered. Amen. You know, but that day at Jack in the Box, that incident came back to me, and I said, "Hey, church is for idiots. That guy should have been brought down first Amen. and been ministered at that church." The rest of us prayer warriors should have gone back to our seats. See, we got the whole thing bass backwards. The Holy Ghost pulled that guy first. The church people got rid of him. Is anybody listening to me? The Holy Ghost wanted that guy, not the Christian quacks. Don't you see? It's, it's all jacked up. <laughs> so when I got over there, I said, hey, I'm going to unjack this thing. We're going to take anybody that's desperate for a miracle. Amen. We don't care what happens to them. And we're not going to have a bunch of rituals and forums and get money out of people. I'm not even going to mention it. Period. We'll put a bucket in the back if you want to give something fine. If you don't, God bless you. And the Holy Ghost said, I got that covered. Don't even worry about it. The money comes in all the time. I don't have enough to do nothing. You know, am I helping anybody here? Yeah. Amen. Dude, the Spirit of God wanted that guy first. You put that guy first, God will bless you. Yeah. You start kissing a bunch of church people's butts, right. you're going to end up just like them. Right. Fat lips and skinny butts. Yeah. <laughs> the Spirit of God. You got to think like him. He wants the drug addict first. Amen. The, the, the executive over here, he can take his time. Yep. Hello? Let's sing on. Yes, sir. All right. Do not quench the spirit like they did at that church. You're not quench. Get a better clicker, though. <laughs> All right. How do you grieve or quench the Holy Spirit well it's easy to do man you run your mouth and you say horrible things about yourself or others you've been doing that have you been living in fear are you afraid of people are you afraid of God are you afraid of doing what's right unbelief and doubt unforgiveness bad feelings about others Jesus called it ought anger resentment low self-esteem Low self-concept, self-disgust, laziness, indifference, laziness and ignorance, lying, cheating. Come on. You have to be perfect to have these gifts, these ten gifts. Do you have to be perfect? Heck no. Watch this. God gives you these gifts, and no matter what you do with them, good or bad, he doesn't take them back. Ametamelitos is the Greek word that means he does not regret giving it to you. He will not take it away from you once he gives it to you. So if you got filled with the Spirit and you have your gift of tongues, even if you backslide, you can still speak in tongues. You can speak in tongues during adultery. Now, they're not going to like that, but... <laughs> you can do it. Hello? You can stick up a circle cake. Give me your money. And say it in tongues. <laughs> God's not going to take your... What's the, should you do that? Of course not. But I'm, telling, I'm trying to make a, a silly point to make a real point is that God's not going to... Because you backslid and you're now robbing circle case, God's not going to take your gifts away from you. Because he gave them to you, and, and God does not take gifts back. He doesn't take his love back from you if you backslide. Hello? He doesn't take it back. He won't do it. Says it right there. Listen to me. Let's check out some people. Who's that? Yeah, that's W.B. Grant Jr. He's been in all kinds of scandals, been in prison for tax evasion. Who's the other guy? A. E. Allen. What happened to him? He died drunk in a hotel room in San Francisco. Who's that guy? Todd Bentley, man. I got a chuck full of kundalini spirits. 
right in the middle of a revival in Lakeland. He leaves his wife and runs off with his girlfriend. Dude, what's what are you thinking? I mean, wait till after the revival. <laughs> Who's the other guy? He just died here not too long. Paul Kane, he used to be one of the uh, traveling healing evangelists back in the 40s and so he got a massive healing and he had he had so many people uh, healed as unbelievable he cracked up and got kundalini spirits and all kinds of false prophecies and everything he came a homosexual who's that guy who's that guy yeah the Welsh revival guy unbelievable miracles that guy saw everything what happened to him Cracked up, had a nervous breakdown, went nuts. Who's the other guy? William Branham. My gosh, that guy had a gift of healing it was shocking. He had a gift of knowledge that was so powerful he could tell you your phone number. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he was one of the two witnesses. Dude, who's that guy? Dowie, the, he, he invented, so to speak, faith healing in America. He, John Lake was his disciple. Can you believe that? Who's that other guy? Oh, boy. Let's get off that one. Who's that one? Who's this one? That's correct. That's Jack Coe. This guy saw so many miracles. Unbelievable. What happened to him? He died in his 30s. Wouldn't take care of himself, ate like a monster, never got any sleep. His body just said, hey, I'm out of here. Boop, he died. <clears throat> Who's that lady? Amy, simple McPherson. My God, she saw every miracle in the book. What happened to her? OD, prescription drugs, in Oakland in a hotel. <clears throat> Tremendous woman of God. Who's that guy? The living legend, Leroy Jenkins. The most, the funniest preacher I ever saw, personally. I remember years ago I went to. He he just died last year. I had contacted him, begging him to come in for counseling. He wouldn't do it. I went to a revival of his several years ago. It was at the Capstone Auditorium. You ever heard of that? Capstone Cathedral. Yeah, Capstone Cathedral, <coughs> up on. Uh, Shay and Tatum. Tatum and Shea, Frisbee, Neil Frisbee. Well, Neil, Neil by that time was near death. He was shot, and Jenkins was helping him because uh, he had put him on a healthy diet. He was taking him to the uh, pool every day for exercising. So Leroy was trying to get Frisbee healed. And um, I went to his, and I sat right in the front row because it was a show of shows. Jenkins was... Oh, if you ever had a chance to go, you don't now because he's gone. It was a privilege sitting on the front row. I got down there early every service because it was the most entertaining thing I had ever seen. <laughs> Jenkins would come out in an Elvis Presley outfit. He had his hair combed like Elvis. He would sing How Great Thou Art. It was unbelievable. It was boomingly beautiful. He sang like Elvis. He wanted to be Elvis amazing. And he would get up there, he would quote scripture, and he would misquote them. And I'd look over to whoever I came with and said, that didn't say that in the Bible. Does it matter? No, it didn't matter. This guy had a spectacular gift of knowledge. He would call somebody out and click the thing like you wouldn't believe, boom, boom. Then he'd misquote a scripture. <laughs> then, he would, then he would tell a stupid story that didn't relate to anything. And I'm, I'm eating the thing up. It's the best services I've ever been in. Because you never knew what Leroy was going to do. You had no idea what was going to happen. Nobody did. He would just get up there, no script, no sermon, and start talking. It was fabulous. Fabulous. And all I wanted to do was sit there and watch, not listen to him, but watch him use his gifts. I found that fascinating. And people would come up and get healed, bonk, right there. Just like that. It was utterly amazing. He had been involved in more skullduggery and more controversial crap than you can ever imagine. He had just a terrible Christian life. God never took them gifts away from him. He helped, I don't know how many people. It was amazing. It was amazing.
Some lady came up to him, I need some, I need a word, Brother Jenkins. He goes, does it have anything to do with $20,000? Oh, she throws her hands up in the air, runs back to her seat crying. That was the prayer she was going to, that was what she was thinking. He knew, he read it, saw her thoughts. I mean, stuff like that would happen all the time. Every service, something would happen. Something good and something stupid. <laughs> it was great. I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> Who's that guy? Neil Frisbee. There he is at the Coliseum back in the 60s. Look at him there. He built that capstone thing up there. What happened to him? Cracked up. Thought he's one of the two witnesses. He had all kinds of healings. He had a wonderful ministry. He was a prolific writer. He wrote dozens and dozens of books. Who are these guys? Yeah, there they are. Pat comes up with a list of Ten prophecies every year. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. At least half of them are wrong. <laughs> you know, you'd think somebody would go to him, Pat, come here. I love you, buddy. Listen, sit down. <laughs> we got to stop this prophecy thing. Yeah. Okay, it's infected. You got kundalini and something's going wrong. Because the Holy Ghost doesn't miss 50% of his... Yeah. Right. In fact, he never misses. Right. He's got a 100% accuracy rate. 100%. Pat, knock it off. Who's the other guy? Kim yeah, Kim, yeah. I saw, I saw him on TBN one time. He was explaining, yeah, you know, I have missed some prophecies. I have given, I've misread stuff and different things. God never forsook these people because they made mistakes or they screwed up, did he? No, every, nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Who's this guy? Robert Lairton. He's the famous book artist. This guy is a... He is an elite author. He has written some of the most interesting books in Christianity. Did you ever read any of his books? They're fantastic. God's Generals, the whole thing. He's got a series of them. They are great. What happened to him? Gay. Who's this guy? <laughs> Jim Baker. Let's skip that one. Who are these guys? These guys aren't even saved. They're fake preachers, and they've had legitimate healings in their services. Why? Because if I'm a fake preacher and I'm preaching Christ and you're believing Christ, not me, you can get healed even from a fake preacher. <laughs> That's how powerful God's word is. Amen. Paul said that. He said, hey, some people preach it out of greed and some of it. You got your Kenneth Copeland's and then you got these. Jesse Duplant, you got these guys, but. You can still get healed if your mind's not focused on Jesse Dupranus and his next joke, and you're focusing on Christ. You can still get a touch from God, even from somebody who's fake. This Peter Popoff is phonier than a $4 bill. He's a pro. <laughs> this guy's a pro. He can preach your legs off. He sounds 100% legit. He learned from watching these holy roller Pentecostal preachers. He knows how to get up there and do it. I hear the God talking to you. <laughs> boy, he picked that up somewhere. And boy, that sounds like real. Wow. Is, is there a glory here? Glory of God is going to drive the devil out of you tonight. <laughs> well, he just, you can learn that. See? You know how to do it because you've been watching this guy do it and you learned how to do it. Well, if you don't have any discernment at all, you don't know I'm fake. I sound good. <laughs> Got me a Cree Flow dollar, thousand dollar suit on, rolled up in a Copeland jet. You think I'm legit because you got no discernment. If you got discernment, you see through that fraud stuff in two seconds. Red flag goes off here. Bang, this ain't right. Amen. Sister, I see the angels of God around you. Well, there's no angels there. I just learned how to say that. I heard somebody else say that. Well, that's a good gig. And so I learned how to spot angels around you. You got an aura of God on your son. It's, it's just, it's, it's all crock. But if you got if you go there with Jesus on your mind and not the phony preacher, you can get a touch from God. The Holy Ghost went with you. Amen. 
Uh oh, who are these guys? Oh, who, hold it. Oops, what am I doing here? This clicker is not only not working, it's skipping my slide. Yeah, here we go. Who are these guys? Oh, Robert. Oh, my gosh. This guy had a gift of healing. It was freaky. Freaky. He saw every miracle in the book. What happened to him? He cracked up. The devil came to him and said, hey, Oral, come here. Why don't you build a city of faith and blend in medicine and faith? Ooh. Yeah, I think I'll give up my faith healing ministry to go build a city of faith. And watch it go bankrupt and retire forty million dollars in debt. Okay. Listen, when you get your gift going after the night, you stay with that gift. Don't transfer into other some other area. A familiar spirit tells you to go do. Right. Don't do that. You got your gifts. You stick with those to the end. Okay. Amen. You don't drift off into some other area because you'll end up forty million dollars in debt. And embarrass the tears. If I don't get eight million dollars by Thursday, God's gonna kill me. <laughs> Oral, dude, come on. Oral, come on, please. Oral. Come here, sit down. Oral, you're carrying this thing too far. It's getting too far out. <laughs> Nothing's too out, far out for the demons. Right. They'll take you any place they can take Amen. you. I'm telling you, seriously. They'll give you an alien ministry if you'll listen to it. <laughs> You've got to win souls on Mars. That's a good idea, God. <laughs> I'm serious. I have, I've been, you haven't been sitting in my office listening to these miracle stories people give me. It's that bad. Yeah, winning souls on Mars. Who's the other guy? Jimmy Swagger. This guy, this guy was the greatest preacher on the planet Earth at one time. If you ever heard Jimmy Swagger preach, man, you can't even believe it. You never even heard anybody preach. Do you hear Jimmy Swagger preach back then? He was on fire. You don't want to know. <laughs> Does everyone fail? Of course they don't. It's all up to human free will and your choice. You are not going to fail because you are going to choose not to fail. Sister Edder didn't die in scandal. Wigglesworth never died in scandals. It never happened. They serve God to the end. Who are these people? Yeah, they serve God to the end. You don't have to fail. You don't have to fall apart. But listen to me. Even if Who's that guy? That's W.B. Grant. That's his dad. The guy had a tremendous healing ministry. I talked to a pastor one time who said he was sitting in the front row of his service one time, and, and W.V. grabs a, a glass of water. He goes, who wants to get filled with the Holy Ghost tonight? And a bunch of people over here raise their hand. He goes, here you go. He throws a glass of water into the crowd, and everybody got hit with water starts speaking in tongues. Now, if I was one of these TV crotch rot preachers, I'd go, hey, we can make some money selling miracle water. <laughs> A miracle water. Wow. Yeah. And then the demons will come to you later. How about miracle urine? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it's there. Yeah, I just got a word. <laughs> Anything you'll buy, a demon will give it to you. Listen. Listen. Urine is supernatural. Just bless it. Anoint yourself. Okay. Okay, fill that cup. There you go. Stupid. Don't you get one the water he threw on him? It's a Holy Ghost. Not the water. Don't you see that? There's no miracle water. Uh-oh, I'm getting emails on that one. Yeah, my career is over. Who's that guy there? Oh, Derry, well, what a wonderful man of God he was. Never, never, never.
Never did it. You got to unblock your gifts, folks. Will you do that tonight? How do you do it? Let's close with this. Here's how you unblock your gift. Something's blocking your, releasing your gift. You already have the gift. You already have the Holy Spirit. He has all the gifts. He's got all the fruit. He's got everything there is anybody could ever dream of wanting in heaven or in earth, period. He's the guy. He's got all the things Jesus gave him. He is Jesus' executor of his incredible estate. The Bible says that Father gave the Son everything. Everything the Father has is mine, Jesus said. The Holy Ghost administers his estate. He brings the blood. He brings the broken body of Christ. He uses these incredible assets to forgive sin and to heal bodies. This is how people get healed. The Holy Spirit brings the blood and every sin disappears for eternity he brings the broken body of Christ he brings these gifts Jesus sent you he has all these things he's here tonight Amen. but he's not going to do anything until you do something first see the Holy Ghost is like checkers it's like checkers you move then he moves see you can't play checkers by yourself Unless you've got multiple personality disorder. You move, then he moves. He requires you moving first. Did you hear that? He requires you moving first. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You make the first move, then he makes the next move. Amen. You move first, okay? You're always white in chess. White goes first. You're the white chess piece. The Holy Ghost is the black one. Then he moves second. Okay, no chess players. Let's go back to checkers. <laughs> okay? Come on. The black one goes first. You move first. Then he moves. Okay? You're going to move now. Here's what you're going to do. Exactly what he told you. You are going to humble yourself. You don't care what other people think, what church people think, what your family thinks. You don't care anymore. All you care about is what God thinks. You're going to pray. You're going to pray in front of people. You're going to pray out loud. You're going to pray on your knees. You're going to pray any way you got to pray. To unblock your gifts because you don't care anymore. All you care about is what God wants you to do. You're going to seek the face of God. You're not going to come in casually, indifferently. It's all good. No, that's out for the rest of your life. You are not going to live like that anymore. You are going to push your way in and you're going to change. Okay? You're saying things you know you shouldn't be saying. You're doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. You're with somebody you should not be with. You're thinking things you should not be thinking. You're having arguments you should not be having. You're going to turn from your wicked ways, says the Lord. That's what you're going to do. Why? Because you got heaven on your mind. you got these massive rewards and glory you're, you're going to be receiving. You see this world as a temporal experience, as Paul taught us. It's temporary. It's a blip on the screen. Eternity is where you're headed. Right. You're an eternal being, and you're looking for eternal rewards, Amen. not this crap in this life. You're going to change, aren't you? Amen. I didn't get many amens out of that, but if I get a few, I only need a few. The Holy Ghost doesn't need a whole crowd. He needs one or two, and man, Phoenix will change quickly. And hopefully this clicker will change. Then, you do those things. You move first. Then, it says, then I will hear you from heaven. Then I will, Ephemi, release you from your sins. Then. Then I will heal you mentally, physically, emotionally. Then I will heal you. You move first, then he moves second. Well, I'm just going to sit here and wait on the Lord. Really? You're going to be waiting a long time. 
the rest of your useless life You didn't hear that okay. If you sit around waiting for God to move you'll be in some bad trouble With this kind of stuff and your gifts. I'm talking about your gifts. Yeah, some things you have to wait for and that's perfectly normal That's a different Bible study tonight it's your anointing. It's your giftings. You're not waiting for those anymore. No. No. No, I said no. I meant no. I'm speaking for you right now. I'm reverse prophesying. I'm having you prophesy to me. No. You are not going to live like that anymore. You've had enough of it. It's not worth it. Your life isn't worth wasting it on carnal activities. Go ahead. Dude. Yeah, I'm not saying to abandon your responsibilities. Of course I'm not. That's asinine. You have to keep your responsibilities and you know what's right. You do that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this spirit world and this call you've got on your life. You're supposed to be something you're not right now. You're supposed to be somewhere. You've got to be somewhere, see? The only way to get there is if my people, that would be you, that are called by my name. You know you're called. You got to be called to come here. It takes guts to come to this place. Yeah. Amen. Are you kidding me? People all over town think I'm certifiably crazy. <laughs> they think I'm a heretic. They do. Jesus Until they need, really need something. And then they want to come over quietly, and I, I have no problem with it. Take them any way I can get them. Listen, you got to be somewhere. God's calling you to go somewhere. And my ears will be open to their prayers. Yeah. Come on. In Jesus' name, thank you. Pray over this thing. Okay, what do you got to do after you repent? You have to zalao. We get our English word, a zealot. What is a zealot? Well, that's somebody who's not indifferent or casual. Something Right now, in Israel, zealots are sh shooting rockets into Israel right now is what I'm speaking to you. Right this second. And uh, all over the nation of Israel, they have bomb shelters. Have you ever seen them? And they're all painted like uh, uh, playgrounds. They have um, flowers and animals and stuff on them. So kids will be feel comfortable going in there. They're all painted and decorated. They're all over the Israel. They're everywhere. They're bomb shelters. <clears throat> and, and then and the citizens go in there and they bring their kids and so they look and they see the flowers and there's there's a bunny and there's a they feel less intimidated going down into this thing down under the ground to hide from the bombs correct you seen those well those are zealots okay so man I respect people who are zealots I don't agree with what they're doing if it's sinful behavior but Hey, you got to admire somebody who's not indifferent. That died. <laughs> In Christianity, the vast majority of the Christians are gutless losers because they're indifferent. New converts drive Christians crazy because they're all excited about God. That makes regular Christians feel uncomfortable. And they sit there and look at these guys on fire and they don't have any knowledge or wisdom or experience, so they say and do things that are inappropriate because they need to be loved and discipled. But the other Christians kind of go, oh geez, let's get let's go out this door. There's there's Dave. He's gonna he's gonna want to pray for me. Well, Dave's been saved four days and he knows you're a gutless spiritual loser and you're lukewarm he's only been saved four days he knows you're useless 
Well, the useless guy is going to run out the door. Why? Because they don't want to be confronted by somebody who actually loves God. Right. Listen, you got to become zealous for these gifts, a zealot, aggressively pursuing them, pushing yourself, going after it. Zelao, crave the stronger gifts, desire spiritual gifts. See? God wants you to develop your gifts. He wants you to bless the body of Christ. He wants you to save people that are dying in sin. He wants you to be anointed and have gifts. He wants you to become a, a, a big spiritual person. He wants you to be that way. He's happy when you're doing that. It makes him proud of you. Look at my son. Look at my daughter. They made these sacrifices. Look, I gave him this anointing. Look how they're helping. He's proud of that. All right. If there are no questions, we'll go ahead and close. Turn off the lights if you would. In this section, anybody here have any questions before we close? How about, how about this section here? Any questions about anything I said? Anything I did? Yeah. Uh, you said uh, knowledge is logo. Logos. Logos. Gnosis. Oh. Um, um, like what I'm familiar with is Rhema being, you know, the revelation and uh, Logos is being the, uh, the written. So why is Logos uh, used in that instance if... You, uh, you were taught words? wrong. Okay. Logos is the total concept of the word. Logos. Rhema is a portion of it. So a Rhema word could be spoken, written, but it's a part of the whole. See, Jesus was... Not the Rhema Word of God. He was the Logos. He was the entire Word of God. Correct? Amen. John, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was God. <clears throat> right? Yeah. yeah, a Rhema Word would be me getting an unction of the Spirit, for example, and say, well, in fact, let me use uh, Leroy. The lady came up for prayer and he said, would $20,000 answer your prayer? That was a rhema word. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> so it could be spoken or written. Either, either is good. Right? Jesus was the Logos. He was the living Word of God. And I was using Scriptures, which is the written Word of God. The Logos. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it was, I might be wrong, but I think it was Branham. Didn't he say that he was going into his closet for like two years and he wasn't coming out until he got the healing gift? What's up with what, what's up with that? That sounds pretty extreme. Well, wh what's up with it is uh, who cares? Um, each person, each person uh, is led by the Holy Spirit individually. Okay, so let's take that example he just gave, which is a good example. Uh, a. A. Allen went into his closet. Okay. And uh, stayed there for the longest time. He didn't say how long. But God gave him a supernatural revelation in his closet. I'm just telling you what his testimony is. Okay, I'm not saying it happened because I wasn't there. He got 13 things from God. Click, 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 click. In his revelation. Okay. Now, Oral Roberts... Uh, fasted for a long period of time. He was pastor in a small church in Enid, Oklahoma. And he rented out an auditorium 
and he told God uh, that if uh, nothing happened tonight, he was leaving the ministry because he couldn't preach a dead gospel anymore. Most ministers have no problem preaching a dead gospel as long as they're getting enough offerings coming in to pay the bills. They'll just keep preaching a bunch of crap. Well, Owen Roberts had had enough of it. And so he rented the auditorium out and all of his prayers were answered. And he started his international healing ministry the next day. Now, Alan's process was different than Oral Roberts. Yours might be different from hers. His might be different from yours. It doesn't matter. Just go ahead and get it. You know, God works with people in different ways. And like he said, that sounded extreme, but that doesn't mean he has to do that. See? Does that make sense? Yeah. If it's extreme for A.A. A. Allen or Branham or whoever did it, doesn't matter who did it, who cares? It's none of your business. You go to God and work it out between you and him. Okay? And that's how you do it. You, everybody's, everybody's different. That There's no cookie cutter plan to the moving of the Holy Spirit. He uses different methods, different techniques, because he's the one who's intelligent enough to do it right. He knows what he's doing, and so we, we don't say, what the heck are you doing? We say, what do you want me to do? That's how we respond. Because we know he's got all the answers, and I don't have them. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, now that's an easy question. He said, what if you uh, did that scripture, turn from your wicked ways, and you're still being blocked? Now that's, that's when deliverance comes in, okay? The person has spirits hiding in their body or their brain, and sometimes these spirits, when they see the person trying to repent, they go dormant, and they try to hide because they see that person trying to take a step toward God. So they, they repent over certain things. I quit doing that, I quit doing this, I quit doing that, I quit doing this. And boom, they get hit. It happens a lot with new converts. They hear this watered-down gospel that's basically useless, saying if you'll come to Christ, you'll have this wonderful life. So these people decide to come to Christ, and all of a sudden all hell breaks out. And their lives are more miserable now than before they became a Christian. I've heard that. 200 times over the years as soon as I got saved or as soon as I got filled with the spirit all these bad things start happening to me I've heard that a million times why the spirits are counterattacking. see so when that guy over there started to turn his life over to the Lord and started to try to do what was right the demons saw it and counterattacked. but once the spirits are out of the body then you are in control, not them. Amen. You then can dominate, not them. What, what that guy just said happens all the time. I've seen that so many times, it's unbelievable. Great observation. Very common. Becoming a Christian, things go worse for you. I'm not joking, because... Before you were a servant of Satan and you did what the devil told you to do and then when you become a Christian You are now becoming instead of the devil's servant. You are now his enemy So now he's going to turn on you So he starts attacking you trying to destroy your Christian life That's 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 as routine as anything you've ever heard that happens all the time But if that person doesn't have any support and has no one to disciple them they usually backslide and they're lost Parable of the sower. Should you ever like temper your enthusiasm or not have so much zeal with 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 the with the with the thought in mind that you know they're going to laugh you out of the room? I mean, and, and, and rather than helping someone and bringing them to Christ, you may be turning them off. Well, of course. But you just got to go by the direction of the, how the Holy Spirit's directing you. 
Right. I mean, uh, if you turn somebody off or offend them, they're not going to listen to anything you have to say. You know, Paul said, I became all things to all men that I might win some. You know, in other words, when he was in Rome, he did it as the Romans did. I'm not talking about sinning. I'm talking about just kind of conforming so as not to. If you, if you, if you go somewhere, uh, if you get invited to uh, an uh, African-American church, and you want to have a healing and deliverance service. The last thing you want to do is show up wearing a Ku Klux Klan outfit. <laughs> okay, as soon as you walk into dope with a Ku Klux Klan outfit, you've alienated everybody in that building. Well, I was just with a bunch of relatives, and I was very excited and telling people stuff, and everybody was like, uh, you need to do that. Yeah. Well, you got tricked. I mean, you got sucked into witnessing to people inappropriately, and that happens all the time, and all of us go through that. We all make those mistakes. That's not just you. Right. I've done it myself, and everybody does it. It's just a learning experience. Right. You know, there's a way to talk to people, you know, and then there's a way not to talk to them, particularly if they're relatives, okay? Right. Anybody who's got relatives, first of all, you're in a, you're in a giant barrel of monkeys right there. Right. I mean, all your relatives, my guess is, are just barnyard crazy. Yeah. So you've got to approach these people a certain way to be able to get a little bit of a point across. But again, the greatest gift of all is number 10, which is love. Right. And love can overcome even crackpot relatives. <laughs> love is something even your relatives who are just gone, they will recognize. Love is the greatest of all gifts. <clears throat> all right, last chance. And let's close. And thank you for coming to the seminar. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. I hope I helped somebody. If I said anything and offended anybody, I want to apologize for that right now. Sometimes I, I'm not a, a teacher or a preacher or a minister. I'm actually a counselor by trade. So sometimes I uh, illustrate things. Maybe I shouldn't, shouldn't do it that way or maybe that's not the appropriate way to do it. And I apologize for that. Let's pray then. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know there's a lot of born-again Christians in this room tonight. I know that. And I know, based on the Holy Scriptures, that each person, if they're born again, has the Holy Spirit, number one. Number two, I know each person here has the fruit of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit has all the fruits. And I know, number three, Lord, that each person here who's born again has their gifts. They already have the gifts that the Holy Spirit wants to give them. The Bible says, dear Lord, that you choose the gifts you want your children to have. You choose them. Okay. Number four, I know that you sometimes you put something in their spirit, man, an urge, a desire, for a certain type of gift, and that's you gently wooing them to develop that precious gift. Number five, Lord, tonight we honor you and we honor these gifts. We look at these gifts as priceless. They are priceless gifts. They are worth more than silver and gold. They are worth more than real estate and stocks. They are worth more than money and praise and love from anything. These gifts are priceless. And we treat them that way. Number six, Lord, some of your Christians here tonight have been praying casually for these gifts and they have not manifested. And I'm asking you to give them Repentance. I'm asking you to give them the gift of repentance. They haven't been pursuing these gifts aggressively. Number seven, Lord. There are some people here tonight who are spirit-filled, born-again Christians who have blockages. 
blocking these gifts. Something's blocking them. They have the gift, but it's not manifesting because some bitterness in their soul, some old resentments in their soul, some ought in their soul, some negative feelings about themselves, some low self-esteem, something hiding in the soul. I know, Lord, it's a soul issue because it's never a spirit issue. It's always something in the soul. And right now, in the name of Jesus, whoever has something blocking their gifts, and you know something's blocking it, and you've got a pretty good idea what it is, just stand up right now so I can pray for you. You know you have gifts, but something's blocking them. You know what it is. It's, it's something you're thinking. It's an attitude. It's some negative feeling about your parents, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, your friend, best friend that betrayed you. Something bad went on, and you got this negative thought pattern in there that's blocking your gift. Something's blocking your gift. Stand up. You, and you've got, a, you've got a pretty good idea what it is. Okay? If you have no idea what it is, just stay seated. If you think you know what it is, stand up there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you're definitely willing to repent of that tonight. If you're definitely willing to do it. Definitely. Okay, there's no question in your mind. You are definitely willing to repent of it tonight. You'll do it. You'll do it. Just come down here in the front so I can pray for you. You're definitely going to do it. Okay, just stand right here and face me. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Very good. You're going to repent of it. You know it. You know what it is. You have these gifts, and they're being blocked. Something's blocking them. Okay. Wow, that's more than I, that's a lot. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Close your eyes then. Thank you, Jesus. You know something's blocking it. You've got an idea what it is. You've got an idea what it is, and you're going to repent of it. You're going to repent of it. You're willing to repent of it. Willing to do it. Close your eyes there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, now what you got to do is just completely relax while you're down here. Just close your eyes, and you just kind of let your body, you know, just kind of shake out, you know? Just relax. Just like that guy there. Perfect. Just like that. Just let it go. You can't receive any from anything from God when you're all tensed up. You got to do is just relax. Perfect. Just relax. Perfect. See? You just got to loosen up your body. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Just breathe. Just like that. Perfect. Just like that. No. No. Just relax there. Had a girl. There you go. Just relaxing. Just relaxing. Here we go. So you're going to come on out. Come out of there. Just relax. Here he comes. There they come. Just relax. Come out. Relax. There you go. Good. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Right now. Just relax. Step away from her. Over here. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes. Don't look at her. Just relax. Take a big breath and relax. Holy Ghost starting to move here. Just relax, man of God. Come on. Yes, just relax. Just relax. Lots of low self-esteem here. Just relax. A lot of unbelief and doubt in there. Feel that? Just relax. Unbelief and doubt. Fears. Come on. Relaxing. Just relaxing. Forgive yourself here. Just reach out now with your faith. Too quiet. Too quiet here. Pray harder. Here we go. Come out. Relaxing. 
Come on. Mind issues. Relax. Come on. Relax, spirit. Satan, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, stop blocking these gifts and come out right now. Stop blocking these gifts and come out right now. Just repent of it. Lord, forgive me. God, forgive me. Come out right now. Come out right now. Forgive me. Out. Forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I repent of it. I repent of it. I repent of it. I repent. Come out. Keep coughing. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come on. Come on. Open it. Open up. Breathe. Come on out. Oh, come out in Jesus' money. There you go. Here they come. Blocking. Come out. Block it. Come out. Come out. Satan, come out of me right now. I command this block to come out of my body. I command this block. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Let's release them. All the guys. All the guys. All the what? Guys. All the men. I stabbed you in the back. All of them in your past. Used you. Lied to you. You know their names. Come on out. Breathe. Breathe. Come out. Every ugly man that ever touched this beautiful woman of God comes out now. Come out of here right now. Come on out. Every one of them. Out. Out. Come on now. Come on. Hardcore scene. There he is. Hardcore. Here he comes. Hardcore sinner. Come on. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come out. Hold that. Come out right now. Get out of that body quickly. Come out of there, buddy. Quickly, come out. Quickly, come out. I just have low self-esteem. I know. Okay. Now, I don't know if I'm in the right You're in the right spot because the low self-esteem usually caused by a rejection spirit from childhood. That's what normally causes it. Or it's a series of bad relationships. And this rejection spirit is usually in this area right here. What do I do? Did somebody hurt you when you were a kid? Um, well, I was I was raped when I was 14. Hi. Um, three guys. Three guys. What's your name? Um, uh, one was Adam. One was one of them. I don't know who their name was, and the other one was Jojo. Okay, great. Ready? I'm great. Raise your hands. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Now, go ahead. Pray for all three of them right now. Go. Get out of there, buddy, right now. Come out quickly. Come out of there. Pornography. Come out. Drugs. Lust. Rage. Father, forgive them. I forgive them. There you go. Beautiful. Keep going. Keep going. Come out. No. Come out right now. Get out of there, buddy. Here he comes. Come on out. Come out, you demon of fear. Come out, you demon of fear. Come on out. Church demons, come out. He's going to kill me. Yes, he's my husband. He said he's Christ. He said he's going to kill me three times last night. What's your husband's name? My husband's name? Um, the, no, the demon said he's my husband. The demon, the demon said he's your he's husband. My husband. He's, he's in my house. Get him out. Every night. Yeah. He talks to me. He says he's Christ. Yeah. He talks like Jesus. He's lying. I know. I know. I rebuke you, you liar. Come out. I'm, when I pray, he repeats. He repeats. He's Jesus. He talks bad to me. And I say, shut up in Jesus' name. And I know he's not. You know, but I'm fighting this demon. They yeah. was, was transferred to but me. But you're because, afraid of him. No, I'm not. I'm not afraid of him. But uh, he was transferred to me because my daughter, Anna, she has a demon. She's a demon. I was dealing with her for a whole You're worried month, about it. And it passed through me. Just repent of it. Come on, repent of it. You're worried and afraid. Repent of it. Come on. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. All of them. Every one of them. Come on out right now. Every spirit from my dad. Come on out. Get out. Get out of there. Come out of my body right now. Come on out. Come. Get him out. Come out in Jesus' name. 
Come out. Hurry up. Get out of my stomach. Okay, take a breath and blow. There we go. Keep blowing. Come out of there, you rapist. Come out of it right now. Come out, you rapist. Come up. Come on. Come out of her lungs right now. Come out of there. Keep breathing. Come on out, you rapist. Come out right now. Leave me now. Come out. Fear and rejection. Come out. At a girl. Come on. Every spirit rejection. I've had like three or four people die all within three years. I think I've been putting a wall against people. Okay. To be quiet and get out of here. Raise your hands up. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, please forgive me. I'm so sorry for what I've done. I took offenses at people. I took offenses at people. Keep going. I took offense. I'm so sorry. Let your tears go. Come on. Don't hold back. Get out of me right now. You know, they die, like people die, like close family members die. Yeah, every spirit that transferred to me from a dead family member, come on out right now. Come on out of my body right now. Come on, get out of my body. Every dead family member, I bind your power, come out of me right now. Come out. Come out. There he is. He's right there. Come on out. Come out. Spirit of fear. Come on out right now. Spirit of fear. Low self-esteem. Come out. Hating my body. Come out of me right now. Come on out. Right now. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Leave me now. In Jesus' name, come out of me. Right now. Come on out. Come out. I repent of every negative feeling I have for anybody in my life. I repent of it right now. Spirit, I command you come out of me. Come out of me now. Go. Get out of my body right now. Every transfer spirit from a rapist. Come out. Come out of me right now. The spirit that has me used food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. Come out of me. Using food as a comfort. Go. Go. Who hurt you when you were young? My dad. What did dad do to you? He left. He left you? What's his name? I dealt with that. What's his name? David. I dealt with that. When you were real little, who hurt you? Nobody. When did you start not to like yourself? What age? I just, I think I built a wall. Like, because? Like, the love part. Like, I love God. Perfect. Other people. I think I just built a wall. And because you don't trust them? What? Because you don't trust them? I don't know. What is it about people you don't like? That they're going to leave. You don't get too close to somebody because they're going to leave. And then okay. Now the demons have got you tricked because they told you that you need someone to be with you. Because if you get to know her, you won't because she's going to leave. She's going to leave. You don't, there's no need for her. Right. You already have the Holy Ghost. Right. It's a trick. Right. Uh, loving people, like wanting to help them. And you don't want to help them. Correct? That's not true. That's not the real you. That's just being blocked. You speak in tongues? Okay, go ahead. Go. Okay, now you're giggling because you're giggling right now. How come? I do. Now you feel you feel embarrassed. 
The Holy Spirit loves your gift of tongues. He likes it, and you don't use it very much. Why? I do, but by myself. Oh, because of... Because... Uh, Come on. Who's <laughs> Fear of man. It's like a private thing. Fear, yeah, like, like everything is private to you. You don't want to be friends with her because she's going to leave. Okay, just repent of it. Not using gift of tongues enough, being afraid of people. Being afraid to speak in tongues out loud in public. In, in public or on a voicemail. <laughs> there you go. Ready? All right, now you repent of it. Go. Good, keep going. Louder. What you need, hon? What you need? Come out of there. Come on out. Come out. Every spirit from church. Come out of her throat. Come out, buddy. Church demons, go. Come on out. Lift out of there. Kundalini. Kundalini, church demons, come on out. Church Keep going. Come on. The rest of them. How did I get this house? The other ones are blocking them. The other demons are protecting him. Get them out first. Come on. Protecting him. The other demons. Are protecting him? Yes, they want him to stay in there. The other demons are protecting him. Get them out. Let's go. All the way down. But the, the, the husband demon that I was in my bedroom every night, he's, he's sleeping my bed. And I saw one night he's coming to the bathroom. The other ones are protecting him. The other ones are protecting him. These are, yes. Get them out. I'm, I'm, I'm all of them. My, my stomach so hard, and I'm yes. so they come out. Let's but get them I all out. A lot of it. I a lot. He's coming out. They're all coming out. They're in layers. He's got to go first. Go. Go. Come on, you speak out like you're a prophet. Go. Don't stop that giggling. That's a nervous giggle. Come on now. Let's go. Whenever you have sex with somebody who has demons, they can transfer in. Particularly a rapist. A rapist, by definition, has them. Because the spirits told them to rape you. The demons picked you out. You follow me? Do you have any negative emotions or feelings about any of them men? No. How about yourself? I, I have I have emotions about myself and what are those? Um, I just feel like I'm not good enough all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I know I have a calling on my life, but I feel like I'm gonna fail at the calling, or I feel like I'm not gonna be. I just feel like I'm not good enough. Okay, ready? Now that's a rejection spirit. Now just raise your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus, we command this spirit of rejection to come out of this woman of God. She's believing lies and delusions. None of those things are true. She is perfectly good enough because the blood of Christ made her that way. She is perfectly loved, completely and perfectly loved. She's going to stop listening to lies and cast the spirit of rejection and these rape spirits out. Now come out in Jesus and a girl. And a girl. Now let's switch over. You ready? Just put a little hum to it and sing the Lord a love song tonight. Rumo shavole, ura rimu shavole. Yondo rabare. Sing it out. Good. There you go. Good girl. Ura rimu shavole. Holy Ghost, touch. Holy Spirit, touch. You speak in tongues? Yeah, you remember you told me it was broken? Oh, and is it fixed now? I, well, you told me it was broken and to continue speaking in tongues. Okay. But I had a question. You sing in tongues? To, yeah, I do. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Ready? She's going to join you. Ready? Watch this. Oh, I took 
Anybody here, can you sing in tongues? Come up here for a quick minute if you can sing in tongues. Come up here real quickly if you can sing in tongues for a second. Can you sing in tongues? Yes, come on. Go here, right here. Go. I'm going to show you a little trick. Here's a little trick to get a mini revival going in your church. Come out. Get a mini revival going in your church. Get everybody together in a group and have them sing in tongues. The Holy Ghost will come down in the group. If you can sing in tongues, come on up here. Sing in tongues. I can speak in tongues. Okay, okay. speak in tongues. Okay, go ahead. Excellent. That's that's legitimate tongues. Now put a little hum to it. Good. Right here. Ready? Go. You can sing in tongues, can you? Go. You speak in tongues? Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't. Come on over here. Sing it out. Sing it out. Sing. Sing it out. Sing it out. Sing it out. Sing it out. Now just pray after me. Kola Vasa. Kola Vasa. Kero Saita. Kero Saita. Bakasi. Bakasi. Bona Bala. Bona Bala. Bakamala. Now, did you notice I was speaking in tongues, but I was using short syllables? And I was using different syllables. Mix. Kind of mixing it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> now, you try it. Ready? Okay. This time you follow me, and then you add a couple syllables here and there of your own. Okay. And just kind of relax. And good 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 there's no wrong answer so it can be any syllable I want to talk to you something specifically. Um, today I was doing, I was watching the video for um, help for mental, uh, mental illness, ministering to the mentally ill. And on there it talked about having ought for your brother and then how the devil confuses you between forgiveness and ought. And I still have um, ought against for your him. brother. Younger brother cannot. And oh, then it God. talked about honoring your parents. I've cursed my parents really badly. My deepest sympathies about the passing of your father. Do you have another one of those? I need one. Yeah. Probably know last that. One. It was your last one, really? You should have offered it to me. <laughs> Deep the sympathies about the passing of your father, but I'm supposedly I'm supposed to go see my father in a week. He's 83. Okay. You need guy to repent before you go see him. Okay, I am. That's what I'm coming to you for. I need the help with all right now. I've done it. I'm, I'm doing all that. Let's do it. Okay, let's just do it. Here's okay. what you do. Okay. When you pray, you just pray out of your heart. You don't pray a prescribed prayer or read one. Those don't, those don't do any good. You did something horrible when you dishonored your parents. You brought a curse on your life. It fell on you. And you want to get this curse off your life. Right? And you hurt the Lord's feelings when you did that. Does that bother you? Is that a no? To be honest, what's wrong with you? I had, I had polio when I was two. Oh yeah, polio. Okay, hold on a minute. Hey, does that bother you? You hurt the Lord. Certain things that I've done to people, it bothers me that I hurt God in certain areas and certain areas. No. Okay, let's repent by faith. Just repent by faith. Okay. She doesn't have any uh, conviction. God, we ask you to give this sister conviction. Holy Ghost conviction. 
Hey, you had polio when you were a kid? When I was two years old, I had polio, and they had to stop the growth in my left leg. So my left leg is smaller than my right leg. Uh, several, five, six, seven month operations later. Okay, and then I would never walk again. Now, uh, were either of your parents, parents, uh, were they saved? No, they were priest Catholic. Were they, they were Catholics? Was any of your relatives, parents or grandparents or anything like Masons or involved in a cult or witchcraft or anything like that? Not that I know of. Were any of them really bad sinners like um, rapists dad, and murderers? Dad, no, my dad was an alcoholic. Your dad was? Yeah. And when you was young, did you feel rejected by your dad when you I were did. little? Yeah, I did. And then when you were at school, were you bullied? Not really. No. I, no. Did you feel, uh, because of your disability, how, what age did you get it? Two. Age two. Did anything happen in your parents' life back then when you were one or something like that, or when you were in the womb that was negative in your family? Did anything bad happen? That I really don't know. Um, Have you ever hated anybody? Well, when I was growing up, I was I was laughed at and teased a lot with some of the neighbor kids, but I just you know, let it go. I, Did you ever hate yourself later in life? Not really, no. Uh, I gave it up. You know, at one time I thought it was I was I was taught through the Catholic faith that one of my parents sinned because that's why I got. Are you are you a Catholic now? No. How come? I am a born, born again Christian. I rejected that. When was that? 1973 ish. 1973. Okay. Have a seat right here, will you? All right. There you go. Close your eyes there. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Just breathe out of your mouth there. Breathe. Breathe out of your mouth there. Father God, I'm going to ask you in the name of Jesus to go back, if you have to, ten generations. Ten generations of curses and sin in this family tree. Roman Catholicism, witchcraft and sorcery. Pope demons. Rosary demons. Angel demons. False doctrines, familiar spirits, the curse of polio, in the name of Jesus. All those people that made fun of him when he was a child, we forgive them unconditionally. Tonight, Lord, we must release his parents from his soul and the spirits from Roman Catholicism that attacked him at age two, age three, in the name of Jesus. We bind your power, Satan. Bind your power, Satan. Spirit of infirmity, bind your power. Come on up. Come out. Mother Mary, come on out. Come up. Witchcraft and sorcery. Generational curses. Back ten. We bind your power. Come out. Hey, will you do me a favor and stretch his legs out? Yeah. Well, at the same time or just one at a time? Same time. Now, uh, you find the you find the uh, knuckle on the ankle. Put your thumb just right under the knuckle on both sides. Keep breathing. Come on out, devil. Come out of there. You find them? Did you find them? Yes. Okay, and then you bring them together and see if the legs are at different lengths. Are they different? Come out. Keep coughing. Come on out, devil. There he comes. Come on out. Come on out, spirit. There he comes. Keep coming. Are they different lengths? This one's shorter? Okay. Come on out, devil. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out, devil. Get out of that body. There they come. Devils, come on out. Quickly. 
Come on out. Leg in the name of Jesus. Lengthen right now. <coughs> Length. Devils, come out. Come on out quicker. Come out quicker. Come out of his stomach. Come out of his lungs right now. Leg, I command you to lengthen. Come out right now. Spirit, come on out. Are they even now? Okay. Keep coughing. Come out, devils. Come out of there right now. Quickly. Come on out right now. Come on. Keep going. There they come. Come on out. Come on out. Right now. Quickly. Come out quickly. It went really fast. It went fast? Okay. This one came out? Okay, good. Keep coughing. Come out, devils. Come out right now. It really did. Ten generations of evil. Come out of this body right now. Come on out. Come on out. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out now. Thank you, Lord. Come out of his stomach. Come out of his lungs. Satan, loose your hold. Loose your hold, you rotten devil. Loose your hold. Come out right now. Come out of them lungs. Out. Come out of his stomach. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Come out of that body. Come out of there. Keep coughing. Come out of there quickly. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out of her. Right now. There he comes. Glory to God. Come on, hold that. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out, Satan. Satan, come out of that body right now. Say it. And a girl. Take a big breath. Come out of that body right now, quickly. Polio, I curse you to failure. I curse you, die. Polio, I curse you, die, I said. Die. There he comes. There he comes. Glory to God. Come out of there. Come out of there. Run. Come out right now. All physical infirmities come out. Come out, Satan. Right, Holy, I command you to die. Come out. Holy, get out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Go. Go. They like scoot it out. Yeah, it was weird because I couldn't really tell, but then I was like, wait, that was a healing in the way you did it. Yeah, it was fast. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Amen. I don't know what's happening. She's going to break. 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 She's going to just repeat, pray after me. Ora mashanda. Ora mashanda. Ola vasi. Ola vasi. Kora mara. Kora mara. Keno masana. Keno masana. See how easily you were repeating that? Yeah. Now this time, did you notice I was speaking in short syllables? Using different syllables? Notice that? Okay, now this time, let's do it again. Only you add some syllables on your own. Any syllable. There's no wrong answer. Just kind of relax and let it flow out. Oravasha. Oravasha. Oravasime. Oravasha. Good. Dandaramoshandaravasire. Any syllable. There you go. Follow him. Follow him. How are you doing? What's going on here? Hey, all of them out there. All of them. Come on now. You you were involved in some really bad stuff when you were younger. Right? Really bad sinning. You were not a, a regular sinner. You were a nasty sinner. And they all have to come out of there tonight. Come on that stomach right now. Come out right now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there, you witch. Come out of that body right now. Come out of the woman of God. Come on out. Come out of her legs. Adultery, fornication, oral sex. Come out of that body. Come out. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come out of her guts. Come on, here he comes. Come on out right now. Come out of there. Come out. Oral sex. Come out of that mouth. Come out of her mouth right now. Get out of there. Come out. Quickly. There they come. Go. Every ugly man, ladies. 
Come on, ladies. Every ugly man's got to come out. Every. What happened? You didn't finish. What happened? Okay, so I was. You didn't finish. You went off with someone else. So I was How'd trying to repent. Okay. I was trying to repent for. Um, I wanted you to do the whole thing. The repenting for the mom and the dad. First, mom and dad. First, in God. Having ought against my my brother because you said that there is a difference between forgiving him and having ought. Yeah. Every time I hear his voice on the phone, he makes me sick. Yeah, um, that's so. that's your soul. Right. Yeah, that's your soul, and that's where your emotions come from. Right. Yeah. So. Go ahead and repent of it. Dear Jesus, I'm Dear so Jesus, sorry. I'm so sorry. Now I want you to pray like you're standing right in front of you. Come on. Dear Jesus, I'm Dear so Jesus, sorry. Dear Jesus, girl, come on. I'm so sorry that I come on. Pray. Good. 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 I pray that you them. Good. Excellent. Beautiful. So when you're mentally um, on your tape, I was, I was. That was excellent. I was watching that today, and it said that now the curse needs to be broken off because I have a parental curse on it. Yeah. For now, I want you to break that off. Yeah. Well, did you? Are you sure you're repentant? Yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. Ready? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, close your eyes. I'm going to count the three. Lord, she repented of bad feelings about her parents and her brother. Because that's a sin. That's a sin. She repented of it. And she apologized for it. And we're going to break this curse off in the name of Jesus. When I count the three, one, two, three, go! Break! Break! Off! Break! Evil! Break! Break! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? What were you thinking? That you were going to hit me? Thank you, Lord. Oh, YouTubers. That we got a testimony it. from okay. beautiful Emily what tonight. Happened? She's going to share what happened to her tonight. Off? I feel slightly better. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Now every time God from does something for you, so you pay him back with what? Found me a projection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And, and today, the Lord has filled me with joy and out. laughter and Everything a else. peace that I can't even Everything. explain. All the men, all the husbands. Thank you, everything. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All of them. Thank you for Come delivering me. Spirit. Come on out. Amen. Thank you. Come on. All these ugly men. All these bad men. Gotta come out tonight. All of them. All these bad men. Come on up. All the adultery. Oral sex. Anal sex. Here it comes. Here they come. Come on, hold on to that. Come out right now. Come on out. Here it comes. Evil. Come out of that woman. Come out of the woman of God. Evil. Evil. There it comes. Come out of her womb. Come out of her genitals. Come out right now. There, there it is. There he comes. That's him right there. Come out of my throat. That's him right there. Come on up. Come on up. Out. Out. There it comes. Go. Come out. Right now. Come on out. Come out. Come out. 
<laughs> there it comes. Now, now, in the name of Jesus. Every ugly man, adultery, fornication, perversion, pornography, out, sorcery, witchcraft. Here it comes. Here he comes. Come on out, devil. Come out, devil. How's this guy doing? Good. This is so she used to come here a year. She used to come here years ago. Okay. We didn't know. He yeah. asked me. I didn't. How's he doing? He's getting them out himself. He's getting them. good. Keep going. Every Roman Catholic spirit. Every. Sp I just want to say do? goodbye. Good. Man, can you go out, just out in the hall what? and get me get a card? Huh? Get a card. Out there? My business card. Yeah. Give me a call tonight. I'm Chandra. I email you all the time. Can you come in for an appointment, please? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. 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 Send me an email and remind me. Okay. So I don't... Where's Corey? Huh? Where's he at? Dealing with my daughter. Okay. Love you. Okay. Come on. There we go. There we go. You get out of that body right now, you filthy spirit. Father God, every man who abused her and criticized her and said negative things about her, every one of them, all these bad men get out of that body right now come on get out of there come on up all these bad men out all these people who criticize her all the time saying negative things when she was young verbal abuse emotional abuse spiritual abuse come up come on that body right now come on Come on up. Come on up. Come out of her brain right now. Kick out of that brain. Come on out. Come on out. You get out of that brain right now. Come out of her brain. No, don't you tell me no. You tell me yes. Spirit, you say yes. Spirit, there he is. Here he comes. Come on. Here he comes. Come on up. Come out of there. Come out of there. Hold on to that. Come on out. Hold on to that. Come out right now. Go. Come on. Out. Out you go. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Right now. Come out. Quickly. Come out quickly. 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 Come out quicker. Keep coughing. Come out quicker. Quickly. Spirit, come out quickly. Quicker. Come out quicker. Let's go. Come out quicker. Come out of her eyes right now. Come out of them eyes. Come out of them eyes. Come out of them eyes right now. Come on out. Come out of them eyes right now. Go. Come out of her head. Insanity. Come out. Seducing spirits. Come out. Mind control. Come out. Mind control, go. Mind control, come. There they come. Come on out. Come on out. Keep coming. Mind control. Brain demons. Come out of her brain. Come out of her eyes right now. Come out of them eyes. Get out of them eyes. Come out. Come out. Come out. Right now. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. You come out of her genitals right now. Come out of her vagina. Come out of her, you pervert. Come out. Rejection. There he comes. Here he comes. There he is right there. Come on out. He's coming out now. He's coming out right now. Go. Come on out now. Go. Jesus, holy name. Go. Go now. Go now. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out of the throat. Come out of that throat. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her intestines. Right here. Come out of there. Right there. Out. 
Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of them feet. Come out of her feet right now. Come out of her legs. Go. Come out of her legs quickly. 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 Come out of that body. Get out of there. Come on out. I want all the men out. All the bad men. All the criticism. All the low self-esteem. Come on, get out of that body. Hurry up. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Self-hatred. Out. Jesus holy name. Out. How'd it go? Um what happened? I think it went I think it went okay. I didn't throw up or anything. Is that normal? How do you feel? Um I, I feel confused. Confused about? Um why why didn't throw up? Come out right now. Come out right now. Uh, probably, probably you don't actually need to throw up. Okay. But uh, did you repent? Yes. I'm Come out of there right now. Hurry up. Come on out. Come out quickly. Come out of there, you witch. Come out. Did you repent? Yes. I'm not going to. I don't. Okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. I know. There's nothing wrong with you. I mean, look at you. You're gorgeous. When God looks at you, he sees you as gorgeous. You're you're beautiful to him. Thank you. See, you keep listening to demons. Okay. As long as you keep listening to demons, put these negative thoughts in your mind, you will never amount to anything spiritually. Okay. You will always be a failure. Because in yes. Romans, the Bible says, you are the slave of the master you serve. So if I tell you, uh, take all your clothes off and run out in the street, and you do it, well, I'm your master because I told you to do something and you did it. And Jesus told you, don't listen to him. You keep your clothes on and ignore him and you didn't. So he's not your master. I'm your master. Right. So when the devil told you you're no good and you're ugly and you have no potential and, not, and you said, oh, well, yeah, that's about right. Boom. You are, he is your master. Correct? So, yes, amen. So when, um, if fear or anxiety comes up again, does that mean I'm not delivered? You're not delivered. Okay. They, sometimes they have to be beaten down and then you can get them out real easy. But if you keep feeding them, they stay there. Okay. Okay? okay. So come back next Thursday okay. after repenting this week of Second okay. Corinthians chapter 10, okay. right? The weapons of our warfare. You have that verse memorized? Um, the weapons the, of our warfare are not carnal. Ten. Oh, okay. No, ten I four. Don't. Okay. That's the verse you're violating. Okay. It says the weapons of our warfare are not. You get out of that stomach right now. Hurry up. Come out of that stomach right now. Hurry. Come out of that body. Come on out. Come out of there quickly. Come out quicker. Come out. There he comes. Come on out. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds are in your mind. And it says, and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Okay. All right. So next okay. Thursday. Then it says taking into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay. Yes. I have that one. That's where you're okay. losing. Okay. The, the thought is coming in and you're going, wait a minute. I'm not doing that. I'm rebuking that thought. Stop it. You go, oh yeah, you know what I am? Yeah, I'm a loser. That's killing us. Boom. Okay. You follow me? Yeah. Follow yeah. Me. All right. Come back Thursday at okay. 7 and then ask for Karina to pray for you. Karina. Okay. Yeah, after this gonna... week. You're repenting this week. Yes. Thank you. What's your name? Alicia. Alicia, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You did a good job. Thank you. Praying for somebody that was 
a little confused or scared because this is kind of an odd this is like a regular this ain't regular church so it looks a little weird but after a little bit you can kind of get used to it and see what's happening yeah and then you'll be fine yeah, it's like yeah. a little, little, little bit of exposure, you'll be fine. Yes, amen. You would do great. Thank and you. And you'll be doing this someday. Yes, yes, I know. Because you got a good heart and you care about people. Yes. Now, is there, anything, is there anything you haven't repented of? You can breathe now? Yes. You couldn't breathe before? <laughs> Stuffy? I felt, down I felt here? like right here in my ribs. Like it was crazy. Yeah. Demons hide down there. They also hide in the lungs and in the and the bowels. They hide right in here. Is there anything left in there? I felt something in my ear, but is it gone or still there? I feel like it's gone. The thing in your ear is gone. Okay. Anything else left? This whole, whatever was here, feels like it's kind of draining no. now. <laughs> okay, out. In the name of Jesus, I command you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, come out of my nose right now. Come on out. Quickly, come out. Come on out, quickly. How'd it go? Gone. Come out of there. Right now. Come out. Put your hand right here. Don't touch her. Dear Jesus, bless this woman so she can be healed and have all the evil spirits out of her body. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out of that nose. Come out of that nose. Come on out. There he is. Here he comes. That's him right there. Here he's coming. Here he comes. There he is right there. He's coming out right now. There he is. Keep coughing. He's coming out right now. There he comes. Right there. He's coming out right now. There he goes. See? He told him to come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Say that. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on out. Get out. Come on, body right now. There it comes. There it comes. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. There it comes. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Come out. Get out of her stomach. Here he comes. That's him. There's another one in there. Come on out. There he is. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Come on out. Satan, come out. Get out of that body right now. Go. Satan, lose your hold. You devil, you lose your hold. Lose your hold. Speaking tongues. Come out. Get out. Come out of her nose. Come out of her stomach. Get out of her body right now. Get out of her stomach. Come out right now. Get out of there. Take out. There he comes. Glory. There he comes. Here he comes. Up. Up and out. Up and out. 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 Go. Out. Out. Go. Get out of there. Come out. There he comes. Keep belching. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' name. There he comes. All of them. Let's go. All of them. Come on out. Get out of that body. Hurry up. Come on out. How'd you do tonight? Feel better? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Come out right now. Come out of everybody right now. Out you go. Satan, come out. Satan, lose your hold. Spirit. 
Get up. Come on, right now. Get, there he comes. There they come. There they come. Quickly. Quicker. 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 Quickly. Quicker. 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 There they go. Glory to God. Quicker. 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 Come out. Quicker. Come out. Come on out. Satan. Get out of her leg right now. Come out of them legs. Come out of her legs. Come out of her hips. Get out of them hips. Come out of her hip. There he is. He's hiding down there. He's hiding in her hip. It's in her hip. There he comes. Here he comes. Get out of that hip. Come out. Get out of that hip. Go. There he comes. Here he comes. It's a snake. It's a snake. He's a snake. Every church demon come out. Every demon from a fire tunnel come out. Every demon from a prayer tunnel come out. Come on, that stomach. Come out of her ribs. Ribs. Ribs, come on out. Ribs. Every demon from a fake prophet. Or a fake apostle come out. Every fake apostle come out. Every fake prophet come out. Get out of there. Get out. Come out of her stomach. Right there. Come on out. Here he comes. There he is. Come out. That's him. Come out. Come out. Come out. You come out of them ribs right this second, right there. Come out of them ribs. There they are. Here they come. YouTubers, listen, this is a route tonight. It's a route. The devil got slaughtered here tonight. Come out. Come out. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Hit the teaching button. Go down and read the two articles, How Satan Controls the Mind and Satan's Counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You must be ready for that attack. Get out. Come out of her womb right there. Come out of that womb. Come out of her womb. There he is. Here he comes. There he comes. Out of the womb. Womb. Womb spirit. Curses in the womb. The curse in her mother's womb. Come out. There it is. Let your tears go. It was the curse from the mother. That's it. The curse in the mother's room. No womb. Come on out. There it is. Let your tears go. There's a curse in your mother's womb. Right there. Let your tears go. How'd it go? Please. I have to come more. Yeah. My gifts, I have the gift of prophecy. Uh -huh. But it has been blocked. Yep. Okay. By him. How, how do I get, get rid of that, that, that? I have this sex husband that is in my bed every night. I wake up in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, there's hot water. Come out of there. Hot water in my bathroom. What, how do I get rid of this demon? Gotta get rid of these first. Huh? Get rid of these first. Yes. There's more. The here. other ones. There's, I got. I got a lot of them tonight. Oh, uh, you did great. Yes. You've done great. They have to get. 
Oh, the rest of them. More. They're protecting the other ones. Oh, really? And I still oh, yeah, they I, work together. I still have my, how many more do you think I have? Dozens. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Next week, there will be only I, a few left. I had uh, the demons in my yeah. bed every night. Yeah. I know. You better I, get it done I quick. I one time. And he, yeah. he, 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 he's they're Jesus, stalkers. He, he, tells, he tells he's my husband. They're stalkers. And they're stalkers, yes. Every night. Yeah, he thinks he owns you. Oh, really? How do I get this? Mm -hmm. How do I get this? Because I don't know. I was very, I haven't been here for a while. I was doing very well my Christian life. I don't have time to tell you. I was doing very well all of a Come sudden. On. I deal with my daughter. That's the only thing I could transfer to me. The daughter that's demonized. She's holding a demon. She says she demonized going to go in somebody's body to marry her. And she goes, after that I crashed because I was dealing, helping her. The whole day and after that day, everything she was feeling transferred to me. That's how I became this way because I was doing really well. I've been very good with the Lord, in fire for Jesus, and reading my Bible, she listening to the Lord, praying. I do everything and then going to church, and I've been. All of a sudden, this is not happening to me since I started talking to her and helping her. The, my mother told me that I'm not helping my daughter, my daughter is demonized. And I start helping her on the phone, and I, it, it, everything came to me mm -hmm. because I was not like that anymore. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Do you believe me? I believe you. Okay. Come out. <laughs> Honey, you got a huge anointing on you tonight. Get the rest of them out of there. You're doing fantastic. They're all, there they come. See, they're just falling out of you. They're flying out of you, honey. Satan, come out right now. Go. Devil, come out of her leg. Oh, he's in her leg. Come out of that body right now. Go. Get out of there. There they come. Get them all out, honey. Thank you so much. Love honey. you. Man. Please come back. Bro, oh, oh, yeah, I try. Oh, yeah, I don't want to miss any of this, man. Like, everything you said was on point. Like, everyone at my church thinks I'm nuts. The only person I talk to is Brother German. You know, and, like, two other people that are led by the Holy Ghost. But nobody else is really converted. They're, they, yeah. they, they serve the Lord if it's convenient. That's pretty common. Yeah. But, uh, just so but you're not common. Yeah, I thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, bro. I love you, bro. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Come back. Thanks for coming. Get out of that body right now. Come on, get out of there. Atta girl, keep fighting. Come on, sweetheart, fight harder. Atta girl, fight harder. Oh, you're doing fantastic tonight. Honey, you got the anointing all over you. The Holy Ghost all over you right now. Go. Oh, you can have anything from God you want tonight. You name it, it's yours. Take it. You can have anything. Your anointing is massive. Satan, every demon come out. Every one of them. Come out of her legs. Come out of her feet. Come on out. There it comes. Good. Good girl. Get out of that body quicker. Come on quicker. Get out of there. Come out. There he comes. Get out of her spine. Oh, he's in her spine. Get out of that body. Come on, everybody. Out. There he is. He's in the spine. Out, Satan. You get out of that body right now. Come out of the woman of God. Come out of the woman of God. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of her spine. Come out of her coccyx right now. Go. YouTubers, I'll be here next Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific time for another unusual teaching session and our healing and deliverance service. Don't miss them. See you next time.